Hello there mortals, I'm Jensen. Welcome to Death and Taxes. This is a popular Carl Sagan quote and I know that we play as the Grim Reaper. Other than that, I don't know much more about it. I played this four years ago with my girlfriend. It didn't really go anywhere. So we're gonna hit a new game. We're gonna erase all of our progress and we're gonna hope for the best. Maybe, oh, there's an intro. Hey, life just gave us lemons. That's nice. What the hell? Oh, it's like a, a manga or an anime. Fate, Keeper of the World Order. So, is this us? Ah, we need lemons. We need lemons. We need life to give us lemons so that we can make some um, bad decisions, maybe? Nice yellow blue to uh, bow tie right there. Yo, YouTube, Yin Selena? No, definitely Yin Set. Yin Selena hasn't been on the channel for a long time. Okay, uh, so we live in 1801. We're also the Beatles. We, okay, it's canon that we are the Beatles. The market. All right, so we're going into the market. We're buying some lemons. Somebody is about to finger our shoulder. They said, excuse me, sir, that's nice. Uh, the world is burning. What the hell is going on here? Okay, this guy's real sus, isn't he? What is he doing with those lemons? Is he having a lemon party? Because I would be real shifty as I, if I was about to have that kind of lemon party too. Okay, looks like he is casting some kind of uh, religious spell with the Necronomicon, maybe. He's got a floating skull, great. Oh, the Grim Reaper, this is us. Cool. Whoa. Oh, I like these. This is neat, actually. I think I'm gonna go with the really, really scary skull. And maybe we go with the John Wick suit or the Harley Quinn suit or this really revolting suit. Uh, not gonna go with the flames, they look tacky. I'm gonna go with the black John Wick suit. There we go. It's canon that we are now John Wick. We've we've laid down our guns and we are now beginning the bureaucratic afterlife. Good. I saw a VTuber playing DDLC and the title was Finally, playing kawaii games suggested by chat. The new spawn has awoken. Is that me? No, okay, so this must be our boss. Or the cat is our boss. I don't know, I can't remember. What a uh, momentous day. Yeah. I am honored to welcome you into our world. Spawn. Hang on. Spawn number two, four. That's 24, my dude. Who taught you how to read? What a dick. I saw Ensign play this a while back. Yeah, I played this like four years ago. I never actually got to finish though, unfortunately. I am fate. I am the keeper of world order. Oh yeah, and what about the human behind you? Uh, hello, a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you, Fate. Oh, a polite Grim Reaper for a change. This is a good start. He speaks very slowly. Well, he's dead. It's not like he's going anywhere. Welcome to your new job as an overseer of Cosmopolis City Subdivision 4, the Sun County Wine Region. Nice, we're gonna get a bunch of alcohol-related deaths. So I do, I do know the basic premise of this game. We kind of like have to pick who lives and dies as the Grim Reaper, right? It's time for a new song, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Reference, a new challenger, absolutely not. I know what you are thinking, and yes, your assignment is choosing humans who have to die. Pretty standard stuff. I will erase humanity! You can bet your bottom dollar fate! As it is your first day, try to get to know the system, and do not destroy the world. Yes? <laughs> Gallows humor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, we're gonna destroy the world. We're gonna destroy the world. Clear? Yep. Okay! Whatever you say, please! Delightful. I appreciate solid work ethics and a dedication to the craft. Remember, Thank you. the fate of the world lies in your hands. Humans march towards the great dying. What's that? They always teeter on the precipice, creating endless chaos. So the great dying has to be kind of like the rapture, right? It's, it's got to be when uh, all of the all of the good souls float up to heaven and everybody else who is not considered to be a good soul by the um, values of, of very specifically uh, Catholic Christianity, all of the bad people, uh, like the adulterers and women who speak to their husbands without permission to do so, and uh, men who look at their neighbors' wives and think, she's pretty good looking, all of those people, they're gonna stay on earth as punishment. They have to stay here on this planet where there is nice weather, there is music, food, even actually honestly sounds like a bit of a hell. 
To be quite honest, there's nothing up there but clouds. My wit is on point. Thank you very much. No, that voice would qualify for a solid snake. Dishwash it. Oh, that's so sexist. God, I hope she never sees that. Let's continue. We keep humans from falling off. We establish the equilibrium and keep the chaos in check. For that reason, your actions will have consequences. I was born to do this! Yes, you were. Literally. I will now show you your workplace. Oh, we are the product of the lemons! Right, okay, so we are literally lemons. Hello there, DJ. One more thing. This will be your seven-day evaluation period. Fair enough. When the week is done, you will be assessed. Yeah, that sounds fun to me. One week to show us what you are made of, Reaper. Why are made of bloodlust? My last life, I was a Viking. There was a Viking skull. Okay. Let's get comfy in our nice giant leather chair and let's pick who lives and dies. Instructions. Welcome, Grim. Here are the files on humans who are in life-threatening situations within your domain. Hey! I hope our domain expands. I am granting you time to settle in, so no difficult rules and requests as of today. Wait for the day. One human has to die. Send me the files by fax after you have made your decision. Good luck on the first day, Fate. Thank you, Fate. Oh, that's so kind of him, isn't it? We've also got a cell phone. Let's just scroll. Let's just doom scroll. There's nothing to do on the phone. That sucks. Uh, the Cerberus den is open on weekends, whatever that means. What is this? A Deus Fax Machina. <laughs> That's actually really, really clever. I still need to mark some of the profiles before I end my shift. Don't know what that means. All right. Philip Palms. Does he? Age 20, he's a student. Philip is a very random guy, meaning they enjoy chaotic and odd behavior. For example, they love playing pranks on their friends and conducting occult rituals. They also have a personal catchphrase of stay out of harm's way. They are fond of animal skulls. Okay, animal skulls would indicate that he uh, maybe is undiagnosed psychopath and also he, he harms things in his name. So this is pretty obvious, right? Die, oops. I need to pick up the marker of death first. Okie dokie. There we go. Philip Harms is dying. Who's next? Zara CL38. She is an asteroid hunter. What began as constant stargazing as a child turned into a career in astronomy. Zara's main goal is to find asteroids that could potentially hit the planet and alert the local asteroid destroyer unit in the military. Okay, she's she's pretty essential to living. So let's let's give her life. I think this day has been pretty easy, right? Do we clock in now? Do you want to confirm your choices? Absolutely. Woo! Like the stream, please? Only if you actually like it. My favorite country song is Good Looking by Dallas. Cute. Mine is uh, Beer Never Broke My Heart by Luke Combs. Okay, so what is this? The Grim Office. What the hell is this? Oh my God. This is thorough. We can go to Fate's office. The Grim Office. There's the Cerberus Den, which is only open on the weekends. And there's also the Quartermaster Mortimer's Plunder Emporium. Okay, let's see what, what the plunder is all about. Customer. Welcome to Quartermaster Mortimer's Plunder Emporium. As you may guess, I am Mortimer. The Mortimer. The one you may have heard of. Yeah, I've heard of you. The famous, nay, infamous Quartermaster. I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, the Mortimer? Such an honor to meet a legend. Aye, tis me. Terror of the ways. I might have grown most humble with age, but tales of my thunderous exploits will live forever. Uh. Cool. I. The Emporium brims with plunder. I plunder myself. From where? Browse at your will. Oh, probably from the office, right? Because I don't see any, like, other things. Right, We so we need tokens of some sort. I see that in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, Lethian Obliviator. Lethia's, uh, that's, um, the first river that you come across in the underworld, in the Greek underworld. The Lethian Obliviator is used to remove grievous mistakes, meaning it erases whichever mark you made on a profile. One use only. We're not gonna need that. We stick to our guns. This is the Ethereal Resonator, which is a widget. The Resonator collates accelerated electromagnetic waves of various frequencies generated by the artificial vibration of eternal recurrence, which travel through the aether and then blasts them back at you. That's a radio. <laughs> that is literally a, a complex way of saying it's a radio. Good grief. Oh, the phone is at 66%. That's cute. I like that. And poo. And poo? 
Eye of Anpu, it's clothing. God of the dead, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries and tombs, and the protector of the underworld. The sound really gets around and grants you stunningly canine visage. Okay, well, I know for a fact that the only colour cones in a dog's vision is blue and uh, yellow, so maybe we don't actually want that. Okay, I've seen enough here. Bye, Mortimer. I'm leaving. What a dick. What an actual dick. He's still, he's plundering the office. Uh, let's go up to Fate's office, I think. Yeah. Hey, buddy. What's cracking? Oh, the new death spawn. Welcome. How was your first day? Really good! Great. We are counting on your dedication. You do important work, after all. Remember, lives are on the line. Do I know what piss ass means? Is that where you're kind of like, you're sitting on the toilet, but you're also kind of inverted sideways. So when you pee, it like trickles down in between your butt crack and gives you a piss ass? Is that, is that, I, I'm pretty sure that's it. I see it. Exactly one person perished today. Yep. As task. Did you figure out the best choice? I did! To be honest, I gave a simple one to begin with. There was no best choice. Sometimes none of the options are good. Not for everyone. Okay. Such is the unfortunate, indisputable, incontrovertible, Ironclad law of cosmos. Question? Nope! I'm ready for anything! Keep your eyes. Bye bye, Juju. You have a great night. Future guys. Good day. And keep up the good work. Thank you, Fate! A new day awaits. Off you go now. God, does anybody else just absolutely love their job? Here we are. We are actually paid to reap human souls. Ooh, dressing room. I need a mirror for this. That's fine. This must be our bedroom. Let's end the day. Damn, that music, it, it hits hard, doesn't it? Okay, so it's the next day, right? Do we go up to Fate? No, Fate's already seeing another little devil. Maybe we just go to work? Mortimer's probably still up, right? Yep, he's still up. What is down here? I have no idea. There's a gigantic library down at the bottom of the screen right here. Can we get the sombrero? Yes! Yes, we can. We can get the sombrero. I did actually see that they added hats in the last update, which was not that long ago, actually. Strangely, this game's been out for a, a, a number of years now, but it's still getting updates. Hello? Science today. Black magic is a danger to the youth. Big asteroid alert. It's coming right for us. Okay, not really a hell of a lot that we can do about that, to be honest. We got a letter. Morning, Grim. I hope you found your accommodations adequate. Here are the rules of the day. Follow him and you'll be okay. I am handing you another simple task. Quota for the day. One human with an engineering or industrial background has to die. Business as usual, fate. Alright, so it seems like fate is kind of like leading us down a very specific path because fate is fate. Right? I don't think it's any secret. Alright, let's let's look at the uh, potentials. Gerhard Fagerjord. Age 26, he's a stone cutter. That's an engineering background. Gerhard cuts and carves stone blocks out of stone at the local wall or at quarry. That's basically it. There's very little else going in their lives. Their dream is to visit some of the highest mountains in the world and maybe cut a tiny chuck of stone out of those as well. Okay, he's a simple man. What about this astronaut? Tameo Hidaka, 31 astronaut. So actually, we do know that there's an asteroid coming towards Earth. We just got that alert on our phone. So maybe this guy's going to be sent up there to dismantle the asteroid. Or if Don't Look Up is anything to go by, perhaps he's going to go there to try and mine all of the resources in it and then allow it to strike the Earth, killing everybody except for the elite. Inspired by playing Space Intruder a lot as a kid, Tameo decided to join the Earth Defense Unit as an astronaut. A dangerous astronaut, uh, asteroid has been located for the first time after the training, and they must now land on its surface and blow it up. All right, fine, that's like Armageddon, the film. Rafika El Query, 33, aerodynamics engineer. Rafika is very much into renewable energy and has been trying to figure out new experimental ways of making power generation more efficient. They also love flying kites and playing with their dog. Well, she has a dog, unfortunately. I think this stone cutter, right, he has to go die. We'll try and save humanity first, first, I think. So that's our quote, right? Just one human with an engineering background has to die. Done. Okie dokie. Oh, we still have to mark everybody else, right? So this guy lives. Let's, let's get the good ending first before we start murdering everybody. I think it's just gonna be the way. Done. Do you want to confirm your choices? Yes. Got another achievement for that as well. 
Awesome. Okie dokie. Who's M next? Uh, we want to go up, don't we, to fate. Damn, this elevator is slow. Although if it were any faster, we'd probably atomize. Soup was invented by John Soup really? when I wanted to drink How when he wanted to drink a chicken. On the job. That's impressive. <gasps> Great! It gladdens me to hear that. So, did you follow the rules properly? Maybe! I don't really know! Everything looks in order, as far as I can tell. And it is my job to tell these things. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny, little cat! Also, the cat is kind of moving around. Continue the good work, and do not let tough choices get you down. Why oh my god, you kill more people! Uh, no. You are to mark the profiles as requested. We are not here to cause wanton mayhem. Try and stop me, fate! Rest well. You will need it. See you soon. The irony, right, about fate is that if fate can't stop us from killing everybody, then it is fated that we kill everybody. That's just how fate works. Bro's barber did fate dirty? Yes, he did, didn't he? The cat purrs softly. I'm pretty sure the cat is actually the one talking to us, right? It's got to be. That human looks way too stiff. All right, let's see what else is open. Grim office, no, the bar is still closed. A lot of people in the bar at the moment. Weird. Very strange indeed. Okie dokie, home we go. Like who took a crap on his scalp? I know, right? Fate looks like ass. Okay, let's go to the, to the office. Do your job. Morning, Grim. A new day dawns. You ought to know the drill by now, but just in case there is another simple one. No special request today. Try to follow the rules and choose the appropriate profiles, then send them to me by fax. Quite a two humans have to die. Easy street. What about what's on going on the phone? Tomorrow science. A, an unique, an unique development in wind turbine design found increases energy production while lowering costs. Nice. Bigger asteroids successfully blown up. Asteroids return unscathed. Nice. Scone cutter crushed in an avalanche during a skiing vacation. That's hilarious. He didn't even die at work. That's that's actually funny. All right, let's look at the fodder for the day. Leo Bajaskic, 67. He's a politician. Okay, di uh, die. He's dying. He's dying. Leo has been in politics for over 40 years, and in that time they've worked hard on relaxing the government's meddling into the real estate market. Although nobody has found proper proof, they have. There have been rumors that Leo has, Leo has taken many bribes from a number of realtor agencies. Well. Sorry, buddy. You're dying. I didn't even need to see the rest of the ones to know that one. I'm back. Hey there, DJ. Stanislav Durov. He is 31 and he's a typist. Stanislav works at the Cosmopolis City Courthouse. They have few goals in life other than becoming the world's fastest typist. Already their fingers run across the keyboard like bolts of lightning, but they feel that there's more that could be achieved. Okay, I think he might want to live, right? Chad Anderson, 25, unemployed slash MeTube philosopher. That's what we are doing right now, by the way. Chad quit college several years ago and started making MeTube videos in their parents' basement. 80% of the content is about philosophy and 20% critical analysis of why they got dumped yet again. Oh, 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 it's probably because of the philosophy. Let's do the world a favor. All right, done. No more complaining for him. Columba Hunter, oh, look at this Chad of a man. 47, airplane pilot. Columba is a distinguished war veteran, these days working as a well-regarded passenger airplane pilot. They're happily married and have five children. As a hobby, Columba is extremely interested in the history of religious buildings. This guy is literally going to be a man in about 20 years. Live. I, I choose to live. Jensen, they put you in the game? They did put me in the game, didn't they? I hope you're talking about the pilot and not that dick dude who keeps getting dumped. I don't get dumped. Not with a face like this. Not with, not with guns like these. I don't get dumped. Much. <laughs> I don't get dumped much. Uh, Anna Isabel Sanchez, 22. She is a supermodel. Okay, she's gonna live. Or we could kill her so we can reap the rewards of having a supermodel around the office. That'd be kind of nice. Anna spends all their time and energy on adhering to increasingly unreal beauty standards. After a gut-wrenchingly painful week of juice detox, they still got yelled at for being a fat cow. During moments of weakness, they even tend to believe these claims and accusations. Oh, that's a shame. Let's put her out of her misery. Let's, let's just put her out of her misery straight away. Uh, so who else was there? Chad Anderson has to die. Uh, Stanislav Jurov, he's not really harming anybody. We could probably just let him live, right? He's got lightning fast fingers. He could become the world's greatest guitarist. We've done it. We've done the day. Do you want to confirm your choices? Absolutely. goddamn lootly. I am talking about him. Eat my ass, Red Rux. You, get, you can eat my ass as a response to that. 
That's how I respond to criticism. Okay, we could go see Diff. Uh, let's see if anything else is open. Because I just don't know. No. I don't actually know what day it is, so I don't know what is going to be open and what's not going to be open. Okay, let's just go into Fate's office here. Hello, Fate! Grim, my latest spawn. It's us! Three days you have been with us. How do you feel? I feel hungry all the time! How is that even possible? Probably some of the psychic residue left over from the creation. Making a death is not simplistic alchemy. Well, I'm a miner. I retract what I said about eating my ass. Um, you take one of these instead. D just one. Just one. Don't be greedy. I know there's multiples that you can have, but you can only have one of these, okay? Just one. Are we clear? Only one. One of those. J only one. Don't be greedy. Don't be a greedy boy or girl. Hard to tell sometimes. Now, let me take a look at the files you sent in today. Okay. I see. You have marked more deaths than was required. Why am I an overachiever? I do hope this will not become like a thing where I have to keep reiterating that you have made mistakes and that you should follow the rules to the letter. This is actually the first time we've had any kind of repercussion for our job. We've been doing stellar until this one point where we have decided that more people die than is necessary, right? You should like 10, I will take all. No! Don't be greedy! You can only have one of these! One! Don't be greedy! Leave some for the rest of them! Because I really do not feel like doing it every day. Alas, if that is what it takes... He hasn't been doing it every day! All? No, you gotta leave some for the people watching the VODs! You can't just take every single finger that comes your way! Don't be greedy! Don't be greedy! Greed is a sin! And we are the Grim Reaper, so, uh, DJ, you may actually be on the chopping block in this game. The cat interjects. Okay, the cat is Satan. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Lady Poddington. Okay, Grim, about your payment, which I may have forgotten about earlier. Okay, I take back my theory about the cat being uh, the one talking to us. I'm now certain that this human is talking to us, and the cat is meowing. The, the cat probably has meows. I think it's safe to say that, right? Oompa Loompa R glasses? <laughs> they are Oompa Loompa glasses, aren't they? He looks like he should be running a chocolate factory, but he's also fate, so like a chocolate factory of death? Like Corridor Digital's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, not like the, the normal Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I was supposed to get paid this whole time. Uh, am I getting back paid for the missing days? Yes! Sweet, sweet cash! Do not spend it all in one place. Even though we only have one place to spend it at. Where is that? Worry not. You will be getting back pay for the missing days. Why care not? The contract stipulates that every death gets a fair salary based on their performance accuracy. I don't care! I just love the job! Marking profiles correctly is the most important task. If you mark more or less than necessary, you will not get your fee at all. Okay, so we just have to kind of like only do the amount that they say is required and not do any more? Errors in secondary tasks will reduce the total even if the primary task is executed correctly. Willy Wonka did unalive five kids. He did technically unalive five kids, didn't he? That really is not much else to say. You may leave. See you tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Fate. Although, again, even if you give me instructions, Fate, and I do different things, it is fated that that happens. You do understand the concept of fate, do you not, Fate? Right? If it happens, it was fated. That's how fate works. What an idiot. I should probably leave the office before I start just casting insults at him. 600 bucks! Whoa! Look at that! 600 buckery boost. Let's go buy that dog's eye. Yes! The Blunder Emporium. Prepare for a perilous adventure on the ocean of quality merchandising. I'm ready. Can I take the more puppy eyes? No! One! You can have one finger! Although... There you go. There's a bonus one. You can have that one. Leave the rest of them for everyone else watching the VODs. Don't be too greedy. Is it cat ears? <laughs> A pair of cat ears would look really nice on me and inspire all of the felines of the world. Just don't talk or even think about the film adaptation of the musical. 
Oh, okay. I thought that was actually just gonna be like, hey, now you can be an e-girl or something like that. Oh, this is a cactus. Cactus, the most brutal of plants. That is true. Uh, we could probably actually get a radio, couldn't we? Let's get a radio. That's functional. Let's not get cat ears. That's Shivering absolutely silly. Timbers. Tis a tale most sordid. All right. I dare not even recall the details, but since you wish to hear it, I shall tell it forthwith. There I was, scouting some rickety office building downtown, and I saw this in an elevator. Went in, tore it out, and made a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> the device has immense power. Ye turn the knob, and infinite pleasant noises come from it. Some might even call it music. I'll be the judge of that, Mortimer. Let's go see if this really is the music that we've heard so much about. Jensen Furry Arc, we'll, we'll go furry mode. Oh, what's this? Mortimer, someone's either moving out or someone got fired. That's strange, maybe we're going to be inheriting Mortimer's responsibilities. Well, that would be so cash money if we could just like get Mortimer's paycheck. I love that. Oh no, Mortimer is the guy that we just bought something from. Okay, so there is a box on the desk. That'll be the radio. I don't really think anything else is open. Just take all of the items. He has no muscles, therefore he cannot move. That is true. He would be absolutely boned if we did that though. Okay, what is this? Token! Cha-ching! 100 buckery booze, I love that. Let's flip this coin a bunch. Uh, what are the texts? Pro news, all survived in plane crash due to skillful efforts of pilot. Local politician dead after being struck by a car. Police have not yet ruled out deliberate hits. That's nice. Pro news, challenger at the swiftest typist world cup type so fast they accidentally break a finger. No! Probably gonna become a serial killer now. Supermodel, found dead in hotel room. Well, that... I mean, we didn't need to kill her, but we did anyway, right? Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this. What is this? I love this. Have you seen Kunk on Earth? Yes, I love it so much. Which is better? The, oh, what was it? The Bible or the Koran? The Koran. Ah, so that settles it then. Yeah, I love that so much. I put, my girlfriend, uh, Yinset, she absolutely, did not want to watch it initially and then I just like stuck it on the background and she accidentally fell in love with it within 20 minutes of the pilot episode. It's very funny. Okay, we can still go to the pub. I think this is just kind of like a, a coin that we flip. It's just a 50-50, right? Maybe it'll stop making noise if I put it in my drawers. Oh, can we actually do that? Oh, we can! Neat! Okay, let's stick this up here in case we need a 50-50. Uh, can we put this in the drawer too? Yes. Still makes music though. Okay, very good. Let's clean up our job a little bit. Let's put that phone in there as well. Any more? Any more fine tunes? Hard to tell. Let's just put that back on. Do your job! Grim, the weather is just delightful, is it not? A shame the sun shines on too few people. Your unwarranted carnage has upset our delicate balance, which we must now figure out. Taking the piss, my dude. Okay, any older humans have to die. Three humans have to die. Time to handle your mishandle. Fate. We killed a model and now the whole world is going under. Are you serious? My favourite moment is the letter H bit. My favourite moment is every episode when they talk about uh, Pump the Jam. Uh, like, with no context, out of nowhere. Uh, let's just throw this on the ground. We're not going to need that. Or we could just rest it on our groin right there. Seamus Sage, 35. What do we consider old? Unemployed. Seamus lost their parents at the age of three and was raised by an odd foster family at an isolated village. These days, they're on a mission to find a legendary skull of death, an artifact that supposedly gives one the power to live forever. I mean, it's pretty doubtful if I have anything to say about it. Okay, good to know. Jop Bing. Uh, 65 years old, retired, estranged from their grandchild in life, Yop dreams of gaining their favour in, or more specifically after, death by passing on their precious heirloom necklace. A deed hard to perform while they live, Due to the restraining order, Grim, I am watching. You should mark this profile to live. Fate. W but I have direct instructions from Fate here to uh, any older humans have to... I'm sorry, Fate. Your rules, not mine. Your rules, not mine. Done. All right. Casper Sursloo. What the hell is up with the size of this guy's head? He, he, he kind of looks like one of those Borderlands Goliaths. 26, teacher. This prominently right-handed teacher enjoys playing a lot of tabletop role-playing games in the vein of beasts and swords or car cavernous horrors of death. They are deathly afraid of bugs, critters, and other such crawling beasts. Well, he's a teacher, right? Morally, we should allow him to live. 
What about this guy? Haith Omdal, 28, unemployed. Haith lived in a small village for a long time. After the death of their trusty dog, they moved to the big city to pursue the app scene. <laughs> what a backstory. So far, they have made a ton of useless mobile apps, but perhaps app number 98 will finally be successful. I do play mobile games. This guy is scum of the earth. He's dying. How many have we got dying so far? We have two dead and one living. So three humans have to die and all of the older ones have to die as well. Lissetti, go on! 82, retired. Lissetti feels old and tired. They've lived a good enough life as they see it and would like to get it on with already. To see whatever lies behind the veil, so to speak, or doesn't, they don't really care either way as long as death finally gets around to them. What if we just... Maybe not. What? Huh? I think we'll be like a, a cruel god in the kind of next run we do, because I don't think this game is terribly long. All right, he's, he's elderly anyway, and he does want death, so let's just give it to him. This guy right here, Indiana Jones, has to live for the film. Done. All right, that's three humans dead and older humans die. I'm sorry, death. I'm sorry, death, but... You know, I, I did what he asked. He did say, hey, they have to die. All right, let's see what he says. Hey, buddy. Grim, there you are. Let us be quick. Okay. All the profiles are here, just as requested. Excellent work. Thank you so much. Although you made an error with my test note. No, I didn't. Such inattention is not commendable. No, I didn't. I, I followed your direct instructions to the letter. You dickhead! Pick a line! I do not fully understand what you are planning to do with these small and trivial acts of rebellion. You are mainly just making it more difficult for yourself. I'm doing my job! This guy is literally giving us mixed messages. Oh, even the cat's disappointed with us. That sucks. Anyway, I am quite busy tonight, so you can go. Until tomorrow, Grim. Wait a minute, I'm only seeing blue and yellow here, which are the cones of vision of a dog. Maybe, maybe we are actually like Anubis or something like that. That'd be kind of cool, actually, if all along we were an Egyptian deity. 300 bucks! Oh, we have to spend this on cat ears, right? All right, let's see. What ho? Hey, How can oh, a mirror. How humble and not at all adventurous self assist you today? There is a plague doctor mask, uh, its clothing, sporting a super stylish beak. The mask hails from an era of epidemics, where physicians, with little to no medical expertise, tried to alleviate the suffering of the inflicted. An ill omen, but it really fancies up my visage. Okay. There is a mirror here, which costs 200 bucks. Looking glass, gazing ultimately deep into the abyssal depths of the underworld. It reflects everything. Well, mostly just you. And there's also an eraser. Not really too bothered about that, right? I forgot to censor. What? <laughs> All right, let's go home. Let's let's have a wee, let's have a nap. I could probably do Fate's job at this point. Fate is not necessarily very good at his own job. He just gave us a bit of a dichotomy of instructions. All right, what's what's in the shop now? Hopefully, there's cat ears. Have you seen no cat ears. Deals before? Tis ye who plunders me. <laughs> this guy is like Saul Goodman. All right, burn, burn. Unholy smokes his clothing. A visage, which is in equal parts bold, gruff, smooth, and cool. Straight from the old days when expensive advertising told me smoking was cool. Okay. Pe peculiar flex, twirl disquietingly inside this glass globe, never settling. In the middle of the storm stand figures too difficult to discern. Everything seems to be in a state of constant transfiguration. It's 12, 1800 bucks. Hell no. YouTube or me blocks the word. It's not me. It's YouTube. I've got auto moderation on. It's also the least strict auto moderation as well. And it has been necessary because we've had a couple of dickheads coming onto the channel just throwing around insults for no apparent reason. All right. We got money. Let's go ahead and stick these in the drawer. We don't need these here. Okay. Instructions. Morning, Grim. It has been a mundane day. Nothing out of the ordinary going on anywhere. A regular day in the usual district of the typical planet. Who longs for some excitement? Quote for the day, two humans have to die. Spare any humans with a food service background. No, I hope you're enjoying the routine, Bait. All right, let's throw those on the floor because we're not going to use that again. Uh, let's take a look at this. I just realized that we can actually move these around. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, Mahala A. How many needed to die? There's two, right? All right, two humans have to die. Spare any humans with a food service background. 
Mahala is a rising star in the culinary world, vicariously executing the head chefs with an iron fist and a brass mouth. Their workers have daydreams of their tragic demise. <laughs> Alright, she seems necessary. I don't know why we're sparing her. Uh, this is Daiju Egawa. He's 52 and he's an event organiser. Daiju has been involved in organising just over 200 events, including anything from tacky-themed weddings to experimental VIP live architecture exhibits inside ancient tombs. Now Daiju focuses solely on throwing fundraising galas for the moderately rich to save the planet. I like that. Uh, that's probably going to be a lit. Chipo Iwo Salarin, 38, he's a sports nutritionist. For years, Chippo has been interested in what effects different diets have on people. Lately, they've been working with the best of the best of national athletes helping to improve their competitive performance. That is a public service. Good God, there is so much information about dietary stuff on the internet. He's living. Good. And there's also Croyla Songyala. We could probably let her die just so she doesn't have to live with that name anymore. I had my first lucid dream last night. Oh, uh, was it good or bad? Because I've had a few lucid dreams and they've... Yeah, not a lot of them have, have been good. I've got to admit, a lot of them have been nightmares. Okay, Croyless Songyala is a 22-year-old receptionist. Croyless tries to spice up their rather monotonous life by flirting with customers at work. All right. I've seen enough. <laughs> Sexual harassment in the workplace is not going to fly with me. This guy's probably going to be a live, to be quite honest. Food service assistant. Ziani prepares the food for cooking, beverages for drinking, later they clean the kitchen work areas. It's routine and repetitive work, but it's the best they can manage while trying to get themselves through college. They've learned to cope with the struggle after their parents died when they were very young. Alright, here you go buddy. It looks like she's had a hard life, but we'll kind of... Well, we'll give her some alleviation. Okay, Stefan Ceres, he's a waiter. Stefan is a liar who absolutely can't stop lying ever. They can keep lying even about the most insignificant things. They just like lying that much. On the other hand, the skill comes in pretty handy whenever someone asks for recommendations. Okay, uh, uh, why would we spare everybody with a, with a background like this? We've only got one death. There's four people with a food background and the instructions are literally two humans have to die. Spare everyone with food service background. Fate is literally telling us exactly what to do right here. It was good. I flew around for a bit and also sued you in my local shop and you were running from something so I couldn't say hi. Ah, oh, that's a shame. It's a shame that I was running from something. I wonder what that means. Okay, Daisho has been involved. Okay. This guy is a philanthropist who seems to do good for the world. Fate wants us to kill him. She, she's dead. And Stefan here works in the food industry, but he's an absolute piece of garbage. So I, what, I, morally, I want to kill Stefan, but Fate wants us to kill Daisho regardless. With seemingly no explanation. It seems like Fate is a cruel god. And we now have the moral high ground. Alright, let's see if we can just like... Oh, we can do this from here. That's nice. Daiju is gonna live. Daiju's living. Stefan, you're dying. You, do you liar. You absolute liar and cheat. Okay, we've met the quota. We've done exactly what was asked. Is the bar open yet? No. Okay. So we're gonna go all the way up here then. Back to the office. Hello! Hello there, Fate! How are we? What a day, Grim. What a day. Let us go over your conduct first. Yeah, sure! Good. I see the correct amount of profiles. Today seems to be in order. So that's kind of like the major. That, that, is, that is the major thing that we should be doing. We should be meeting the correct amount of profiles. Anyway, Grim. Five days you have been with us. How does it feel to make the difficult choices? Well, honestly, I feel like I'm not killing enough people. Why crave more? Grim, take this seriously. We are here to save the humans from themselves and hold the chaos at bay. Little bro thinks he's the main character. He does, doesn't he? What a dick. But think of the humans. Do you think our office is the appropriate way to deal with them? Absolutely! Hmm. Your certainty soothes me. Ours is the tradition, and those should not ever change. For that is the meaning of a tradition, yes? Uh... Yeah, but outdated values become outdated and then harm society. This control over all the lives, unbeknownst to the humans. Do you not consider it unethical to make the choices you make? But you hand out the rules and make me do the choices! True enough. 
One must be in charge. The others are there to follow. I am in charge! The office is perennial and venerated. Eons we have spent designing the appropriate methods and strategies. We know what we are doing. Really? I don't think you do! Oh, I do apologize for taking up so much of your time. Before you go, are there any questions you would like to ask me? Just thinking about it, actually. Why? Oh, I was right on the tip of my tongue. I've already forgotten the question I just had. Okay. What is the basis for the profiles? Is there a point system? Why do they... Why do all the profiles refer to the people as they? Well, I mean, that's probably an obvious answer. Why haven't I seen any underage profiles? Ah, the children. They are a special case for a different set of departments to deal with. You will not find any yourself. Okay, so what I was going to say is that the whole point of a corporation or a bureaucracy is that it enables people who don't know what they're doing to have enough of a skill set uh, around the entire corporation so that generally somebody can fix a problem. Which is why bureaucracies are so um, awful to deal with. It's, be it's literally because the people hired into bureaucracies are hired because they don't know what they're doing. They're very, very soft, squishy people. Uh, they need money to support a family. They can't really get a job elsewhere that actually helps society in any way, shape or form. That's generally the whole point of bureaucracy, right? Is so that people who otherwise would starve to death or be homeless can actually find a job, right? I, I feel like that is the entire point of bureaucracy. Because otherwise it would just be all like, hey, uh, I need this thing. I go up to a company and I say, hey, I need this thing. And they say, every single person here has the skill to help you out. Who do you want to help you out? And I say, I don't give a damn. I just need this thing. Do it now. Whereas a bureaucracy, you go up to a company and you say, hey, I need this thing done. And they say, oh, damn, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to have to send that on to legal who's going to have to forward that on to HR because I'm not allowed to speak directly to HR because they don't like my department, not based on whether or not they like the people in the department, but because they assume that they don't like people in the department. They've got a lot of racist and bigoted ideas about life and they can't really work anywhere else. So we need the kind of departments to liaise with each other to pass on information to each department. And you think, man, I'm, I'm literally just here to like buy a pack of smokes or something like that. that. That is the whole point of bureaucracy, is so that people who do not know how to work can still feed a family. Okay, are there many offices or departments? Countless. And they all have Reapers working in them? Myriad. Really? Close enough. <laughs> Anything else? What about the animals? Do they get a department? Absolutely. All living beings have to be processed after the end. No escape. Even plants. Yes, there is a department for plants. Do not ask about the plant department. Who do I have to talk to to get a liaison between me uh, and the plant department so I can maybe uh, like talk to somebody in the plant department? Anything else? Yes! What about the unliving things? Buildings and crap! Technically, uh, kind of, I guess. Ruins are like a type of dead. But then again, they often feel so alive. What about him? What about fate? Well, the only way that we can kill fate is by not doing what fate says from a philosophical standpoint. However, if we do that, then it is fated that we overturned his decision, his conscious decision as a physical corporeal being, which is fate in a nutshell, right? So if something happens, it was fated to happen. That is the whole point of fate. You can't necessarily kill the idea of fate, but if this guy is named fate, you can kill this guy and it would have been fated that fate dies. If, if you kind of understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's like a difference between um, a script and a variable, if, you, if you're good at programming. Or like the difference between the car and the road, right? The road is always going to be there, the car, the car will not be. Hmm, I must ponder. This topic is a bit too abstract for now. Let us table it. No! Anything else? What's the basis for the profiles? Is there a point system? Oh. Not at all. Don't they influence the world in many ways? In all and in none, yes. Is it predetermined? What about free will? Humans have some free will, sure. They can make a variety of choices. Yet what matters is that they cannot escape the inevitable. 
Again, another irony of fate is that I, the player, am a human. I am directly influencing f the fate of this game through the conduit that is our player character. So I, a human, am changing fate as it goes, which means it is fated to happen. So whatever ending that we end up with in this game is the fated ending that we were going to get for, uh, that we were going to get before we finish the game. That's how fate works. The life-threatening situations that bring them onto your desk a result of their own deeds and decisions. If you're an interviewee right now, then Philomena would stare at the camera while sighing. Yeah, I know. It's a boring thing to think about, like philosophy and the um, how death works, how, how the great beyond works and all of that. It's really boring to think about. But once you have kind of like a healthy relationship with death, life is better. Life is always better. It's a boring thing you have to learn so that life is better. Like algebra. Once you know algebra, you can cook for many, many people at once. Then there are some highly complex calculations, factors and aspects that influence the situation. But that is just a bit over your pay grade, so do not worry about it. Uh, that is absolute. that's a crock of garbage, actually. The, the only factors that influence an action are the factors that had already happened. You cannot predict factors that are going to happen to lead to a death. Uh, unless it's like a bomb or something like that. Like, you drop a bomb, it's likely someone's going to die. It depends on where the bomb dropped. If you drop the bomb in the ocean, then chances are a human's probably not going to die from it. Fish will probably die from it. Anything else? Why do all the profiles refer to people as they? An astute observation. You see, Grim, our office does not operate on information about biological backgrounds or genetic composition. Okay, so what he's just told us here means that nobody can possibly die from cancer, right? Because uh, genetic factors do not ever play into account with death. And, uh, you know, the genetic predisposition to things like cancer, blood diseases, uh, other disabilities, that has nothing to do with how somebody's going to die. This guy is... This guy's the dumbest philosopher I think I have ever come across. So no gender information! Minimal. Everyone you assess is simply human, after all. Excluding any monumental error in normal procedure. The bottom line is that the humans end up on your desk and that you must follow the rules. This guy's a penis. This guy is actually a penis. Anything else? <gasps> well, I want to get back to work! Right. It has been enlightening. I bid you a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye! Bye bye! Bye bye, face! 300 bucks, nice! Let's go to bed and then tomorrow we'll check out Mortimer's shop. Nice. Feels good! Curious Grim, we asked all of the questions in the first law hub. Just got an achievement over my shoulder. I'd like to show you before it goes away, but I didn't. Uh, Mortimer, what have you got here? Good patron, me ship of goods is at your service. Is he, is he flirting with me? I just don't know. This dark cape is a classic attire for any grim deeds. It's pleasantly warm while offering protection against wind and rain, which you won't actually need as you'll always be stuck at the office. Well, that's hell. A perfectly regular sized toy gerbil made of rubber. I, I'm buying Boo the gerbil. Cor, blimey, how did this wee monster even get here? Tis not really all that valuable plunder. <laughs> Found a tiny fellow on the riverbanks of Styx itself. A lifeless, adorable thing. Can't imagine it being useful for anything. But sure makes delightful squeaks when you stroke it. <laughs> Just like me. All right, so we'll go back up to the office. We'll start our day and we'll play with our little squeaky toy. I'm really excited to play with the squeaky toy. We just got it. Yes! Ah, the cacophony of the damned. That's why we have this job, guys. That's why we come in here every day and we do this job. This is what it's all about. The cacophony, the screams of the damned. This is why we are here. All right, do your job. Morning, Grim. We seem to be on the precipice of dark times. I may have warned you that this job can have some harsh moments. Today is their day. A total of six humans have to die out of eight. At least two humans aged 35 or younger have to die. Any humans with a medical background have to die. Fate just said it's got nothing to do with genetic predisposition. Pick a lane, you oaf. All right, let's throw that out. It's useless to us now. Uh, let's scatter these out so we can kind of, like, judge people aesthetically. Yeah, this is nice. This is good. This is good. I like this. This one here, and this one goes here. I do like the smooth jazz that we can kill people through. 
Can we intercourse the fate? No, we can't. Fate screws himself over. Pe okay, pediatrician. She works with feet for a living. She may be some kind of chronic pervert, or she may just actually be a pediatrician. Her name is Zola or G. Omiata. Zola specializes in child abuse pediatrics. Okay, I misinterpreted pediatrician. Child, beauty, uh, child abuse pediatrics and is able to determine the signs of abuse from very subtle signs. They've had a key role in saving countless children from dangerous environments. Who has to die? Uh, two humans aged 35 or younger have to die, and a total of six humans have to die. Okay, she actually seems real essential in the world. Uh, let's put her in the I want to make her live uh, pile right here. This guy, Forrest Seguin, 42, he's a pawn shop owner. Mostly sober throughout their life, Forrest has recently taken up heavy drinking, anything to keep their mind off of the dead person's necklace now in their possession. They meant to sell it for a hefty sum, but it's almost as if the necklace demands to be worn. We could just, like, keep him alive just to torment him. Ah, uh, no, nah, we'll put him out of his misery, right? Die. And we'll let the, uh, death squeak. Nice. So, the next one is Carrie Haven. Gardening is Carrie's favourite pastime and also their line of work. They enjoy, go, they enjoy growing edible exotic plants and experimenting with different recipes. They also are an expert in natural poisons. Uh, okay, so she could be really essential if somebody becomes poisoned or she might be a murderer. She is on the chopping block though. I kind of want her to live though. I'm going to put her in the I want her to live pile. Annabelle has devoted themselves to becoming either an astrophysicist or an astronaut. The two things are somewhat related. They also enjoy painting, mostly nudes, computer programming, and volleyball. Annabelle tells she is 20, she's a student. She adds nudes to the world. Maybe, uh, I don't know, like, that doesn't seem terribly essential. And I know just because somebody wants to become an astronaut doesn't mean they necessarily will. Uh, let's check out phone. Birdies, restaurant staff uh, in revolt against authoritarian sous chef. Okay. Local receptionist strangled to death with own necklace. The offending piece of jewellery reported missing. Ah, so that's what this pawn shop owner now has. I'm starting to see like a couple of other little stories going on in the background too. Respecting nutritionist caught distributing illegal performance enhancers to athletes in their care. Oh no, that's embarrassing. That was us. A week-long gaming marathon raises over 4 million for the Prevent Ecological Catastrophe organisation. That's probably a good idea. A small town prodigy moves to the city. We say reach for the stars. Fine. Whoops. I didn't want to put that away. Scientists very close to figuring out how to encounter a dangerous pathogen. Dangerous pathogen. So the poison lady might actually be really helpful for the near future as well. KG made a fortune with their protein bar factory, allowing them to retire early. They decided to use the hard-earned fortune on helping the community, supplying the impoverished regions with free potato plants and helping them become self-sufficient. Okay, if the infrastructure's already there, then we probably don't need them alive. That's going to be a 50-50. For the past 15 years, Yay has spent... Her <laughs> name's Yay Harmer. 48, immunologist. For the past 15 years, Yay has spent every day working in a windowless concrete bunker, testing various vaccines in order to eradicate some of the deadliest diseases in the world. During off times, they enjoy lengthy bike rides. Well, we did actually just see a news article saying that there is going to be a virus popping up soon. So let's go ahead and let her live real quickly. Put her in the live pile. I, well, the I don't knows can go over here, I suppose. Good. Who's this? Jackson, Jackson P. Ortega. He's got a sideways beard. That's weird. He's 32. He's a project manager. Jackson doesn't seem to get a break. They manage various projects, which all somehow end up failing. They used to be married, but nothing lasts forever. Their pet goldfish died one day. Their bike always seems to have a flat tire, and this is just the beginning. Oh, well. Sucks to be him. No! Oh, I want to hit die! Oh, I should have read it before I hit it. Oh, well. Lucky to be him. Okay, everyone else has to die now, unfortunately. Right, we need two humans age 35 or under to die. I don't think we've got any others age 34 or under, right? We've got 42 here. We've got a 20-year-old and we've got a 32-year-old. So everyone here has to die, unfortunately, because I accidentally misclicked. Now I understand why that what's my dingle was so valuable. The eraser. Die, die. Sorry there, KG. And Zoya, Zola, sorry, you just drew the wrong straw, I think. Goodbye. And Annabelle, uh, your nudes are going to get real valuable real soon. Put that there. And of course, Carrie Haven, the person that I probably would have chosen to live, as opposed to the man with the sideways beard. Uh, we are going to uh, kill her because we don't have a choice in the matter. Thank you, fate. Right, that's it. We're good. It's just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Maybe. 
Maybe. Maybe we'll try Bugger Face, but I don't think so. I'm not attracted to him. Ah, Grim. It looks to be a rough day out there. New recruits often falter during dark time. Oh, I love my job! Yet you seem to have performed adequately. How do you feel after such a day? Oh, I was built for dark times! Excellent. With this attitude, you will become a most industrious reaper. Let us hope these days do not continue. Any idea what happened? Ah. Uh... Some sort of medical calamity, maybe, like an epidemic. Interesting. An insightful streak may yet rattle inside that skull of yours. Hmm? Off you go now, Grim. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Fate. We're the only ones here. What are you talking about the stream? I love how everyone actually cares whether or not there are actually people watching the stream. As if the entire stream that I do, that I do, relies in exclusively on viewership. As if I'm literally not streaming to have fun and get some social aspects in my life because I am house ridden. I don't get to leave house, which means I've lost most of my friends, the ones that I don't live with. It, like, views mean absolutely nothing to me. I am only here to enjoy myself and have fun Doing my favorite hobby, which is recording videos and uploading them to YouTube. Uh, no, actually, let's go check a look at the bar. Maybe we can get some... Oh, it is open. Okay, hello there, everybody. All right, Gus is a ghost. We've got a, a sexy demon thing here. Grim Day, that's a, a Green Day joke. Quartermaster Mortimer's Plunder Emporium. Meet your fate. Pro Patrol, Ford and Murders. Thinking with mortals. Ha <laughs> I do that. Employee of the Month, Reaper 667. It's a pumpkin here. That's lovely. Okay, uh, let's talk to Guts. The air is eerily cold, as if frozen in one place, too scared to move an inch. Boo! Really? That is what you're going for. Why, my new Grim, number 24. What's up? A fresh faced lemon head. Uh, exactly what I wanted to see. POV, you made an observation but got an unskippable the instant dialogue. It's because I run the channel! I run my channel! If you don't want unskippable the instant dialogue, literally go to any other channel. Okay, good. Hey now, Gus, play nice. Oh, that's a sexy demon. Well, seems I'm stuck with you now. You want to ask questions or something? Yes, what do you do here? I'm the janitor. I clean up the damn mess you make. Uh, what mess? I haven't done anything. Have in the mirror or thought about the clientele of this place? No, never. Where do you think the drink goes? None of you have a stomach. Anything you consume falls through the rib cage, straight to the floor. I was wondering why the floor is so sticky. Pretty gross, right? Yep. A gift to the world from all you pompous reapers. Well, we're not actually in the world, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of like let them away. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Be at least a little more considerate. Uh, I appreciate you. Gee, uh, thanks. Okay, this guy's just going to be a salty dickhead no matter what, right? Eh, something else you wanted? How do you clean things, anyway? Simple. I float around, and I possess stuff, and make the stuff float into the trash bin. Right. For dust, for example, one dust particle at a time. Or the drinks, one droplet at a time. Why don't you just possess a bucket and then scoop it all up at once, or possess a brush pan? Isn't that kind of inefficient? Could use a bit of modernization, yeah. As if the highest management ever gave any thought to us lowly drones. We're all nameless custodians and spawns to them. Literally. This guy's intentionally making his own job harder, harder just to complain about it. Alrighty then. Uh, could be they're kind of busy. Oh sure the perennial office needs constant supervision. <laughs> Not like they actually do anything. I mean, they murdered the planet. Eh, something else you wanted? Okay, can you tell me about the Barky? Sorry. They're hella cool. Really? Why, thank you. Nothing but a sweetheart, ain't ya? He is. Ah, shucks. You're the only one who truly treats Gus with respect. What about me? Who were you from before? What's that supposed to mean? You know, human. What were you? Why does everyone think ghosts are dead humans? I mean, you are kind of bipedal and human-like. Uh, maybe folks should get over this common misconception. No, no. Ghosts aren't mere residue, a relic of humans, animals, or whatever other entities. We're just ghosts. We're beings unto ourselves. Okay. I am the ghost of a ghost. Hang on, you're a ghost and then you died. Yeah, pretty much. Does that mean you're practically immortal? I figure you'd first have to be alive to count as immortal. 
It's a bit more complicated than that, but honestly, I ain't got the patience to teach you ghost history, so... Misinformation! Misinformation! Immortal means that you cannot die. It doesn't mean you were living in the first place. A golem is theoretically immortal. It doesn't have life in it, but it can't die, so... There you go. Eh, something else you wanted? No, not from you. You're a... Yeah, yeah, I gotta get back to work anyway. I don't like you, Gus. Goodbye. We finally found our first workmate we hate. Bye-bye, Gus. Piss off. Let's talk to the sexy demon. Whoop. Hello there. I'm Sari, and I welcome you to... Cerberus' den, the finest drinking establishment this side of the void. <laughs> A pair of sunglasses is immortal? Yes, anything that uh, cannot lose life is immortal by raw definition of the word immortal. <laughs> sure as heck I haven't seen you before. You must be brand new. I am brand spanking new. Thanks for noticing. It's dapper like the River Acheron. The Abbot screams vintage. Thanks, I stole it from John Wick. So, how are you liking existence thus far? Ah, uh, feels pretty good to be alive, in a sense. Look on the brighter side of undeath, eh? I'm sure you never thought this was how you'll end up. Am I immortal? On the video, absolutely, yes. Videos can't die. Sometimes, these are the cards we are dealt. Okay, newbie, before we continue, I got this little, uh, game I play with every fresh-faced patron. It's real simple. I like games. Okay. All you gotta do is answer a series of questions, and I'll craft a personalized drink inspired by what you said. It's like a quiz. I love quizzes! Right, <clears throat> the gist. I'll describe some sort of an odd situation, and you answer how you react. And I usually do four questions, and nothing else to it. Okay. Here we go. Prepare for question number one. Give it to me, lady. You behold two doors. Yeah. One plain and old, the other forged of gold. The old one seems to imply disgrace and shame. The golden door cries of nobility and grandeur. It's up to your brave soul to make the first choice. Which door will you enter? <laughs> I doors of a dimwits, I'll break the window and jump out. Uh, we don't actually know if there's a window. I'm actually, I, I don't like any kind of like golden doors or anything too fancy. It makes me feel super out of place because of where I grew up and where I come from. So the old one, definitely. Time for question number two. After years of working a stable, albeit a monotonous office desk job, you are let go due to a corporate downsizing. Right. This, however, has given you a chance to reinvent yourself. What will you become? An executioner, the harvester of human sorrow. Next up, question three. Almost there. You are given the chance to level up one attribute of your character. Which aspect would you increase? Uh, Bonestitution, Calligraphy, Capestim, Grimism, Cytherity, or Skulligent. It's got to be Calligraphy, right? We, yeah, handwriting, definitely. All right, final stretch. As I said, four is all anyone ever needs, right? You and a friend are valiant but poor warriors. Out to slay a mighty dragon, it's a fierce spectacle. No kidding. At the end, your friend thinks he slew the dragon, while in actuality, you did. When asked, what will you do? Well, the reward can be shared by all. It's it's literally everybody wins if the dragon is slain, right? We got it. Let me just calculate the results. <laughs> Metaton has returned. Hello there, Metaton. Leans to stability. Got the appropriate concoction in mind. I just got an achievement for scoring a really, really balanced score on this test. Start off with a nice mixture of four centiliters of gin. No! Liter of elderflower liqueur. No! Of sugar syrup. Yuck! Centiliters of club soda. Leave everything but the club soda and piss off, lady. Flash in some lime juice concentrate, add several slices of well smashed cucumber and some cute ice. Actually, I changed my mind. Leave the lime juice and piss off. Uh, I'm not sure this is correct. The quiz tells no lie. I think a suitable name would be... Borehole. I don't like that name. First one's on the house. Good boss! Okay. <laughs> Just heard a splashing sound, because it went through us. We're skeletons. The drink, smooth waves rolling onto the coast, then receding gradually. A constant rhythm of symmetrical alternation grinding off the edges. The taste recalls a harmonious interplay of physical forces, soothing a turbulent soul until all that's left is a polished plane of alabaster. That is all just a bunch of hipster gobbledygook. None of that means anything. And also, we don't have a tongue. 
It's almost a death-changing experience. Uh, we can only compliment her. We can't say it sucks. But how, would, how do we know what it tastes like? We just don't know. Could have been worse. Heck, an understatement of the century. Now what else can I get you? Uh, I want your tip jar. Oh, thanks. Mortimer found the original oinker on an excursion to the shrouded zones. It's a bit of a hassle, though. It keeps multiplying all the time. Take your eye off for a second and bam, tiny piglets everywhere. What is she even talking about? Go on, take one. Just make sure you feed it with some coins once in a while. Ah, thanks. What's your take on the janitor? You've been chatting to our spooky one, eh? <laughs> that don't mind the grump, it's a ghost thing. Okay. Gus especially has a pretty dang irascible nature, but there's a layer of performance to him. Well, it's abrasive and no one likes it. In truth, they've been hella helpful around the den throughout the ages. I'm grateful for that. Besides, the office itself couldn't operate without Gus and company. What else you got in mind? Uh, who else was in the office? Heck, were I able to count and name all the folks? I likely haven't fully realized the size of this place. We've got you Reapers and mm -hmm. all the myriad departments, the Custodian yep. Legion, of course. the course. Data Grinders at the Calculatorium, Weird. the Abysmal Archive, we can't go in there. Cadaver resources. They're just plain odd. But someone's got to deal with the internal issues. Okay. Uh, I'd like to lay a cadaver resources complaint against that ghost. Middle management. Nobody knows what they actually do. Higher management. But they don't visit us. Basically ever. Same with fate. Many of the regular workers come by the den now, so keep your eyes and ears open. I don't have either of those things. What else you got in mind? Uh, what's the tech on the janitor? Chat. Okay. Especially. Are we exhausting dialogue? What else you got in mind? Mm, yes, I'll take a drink. Sure. What's your poison? Oh, piss. Oh, piss. Milk, please. Uh, going straight edge. I get where you're coming from. Uh, I'm going to wave my drink at Gus. It tastes like milk. Okay. Oh, we just. Wow, little Reaper. <laughs> Bispold. We just, we literally just waved at the janitor and then dumped a bunch of crap on the ground. Where is her tip jar? Where is this thing? Okay, we're leaving. This place has nothing for us. What's down here? There's Mortimer. I don't think there's anything else that we can kind of go into, right? We just gotta kind of go down for the day. All right, good. The next day, it's the next day. It's the next day. We can go back to the office. I wanna see what Mortimer's got. We'll see if we can get some carriers. For ailments, so uh, to ward off a curse. No, Mortimer, I don't want any of that crap that you have in your treasure bucket. I wanted carriers! Idiot! What is this? Sexy uh, skeleton riding on the ledge. Hey! What the hell? Oh, thanks, game, for that invasive... Where the hell is my piggy bank? Oh, okay. Finally. Let's put all of these coins into the pig. Nice, the pig's getting all nice and fat. Oh, I just got an achievement for chunking up the oink bank as well. Okie dokie. So, let's see what's up. Morning, Grim. Okay, see if we can clean up the mess from yesterday. That might give you just the boost you need. Do not forget, you may leave troubles behind, but new ones always lie here. Two humans have to die. Spare humans who seem helpful against the troubles. Uh, I don't know if we'll do that, actually. All right, so two of them have to die. This Kiana Wanda song here is a 19-year-old cut purse. Kiana enjoys being a mischievous thief. We're not snatching small, largely frivolous items. They sing loudly at every single person they meet. They found this to be the best way of solving problems. That is, uh... All right, she, she's going into the death pile. Here is Charlie Gok. Uh, he's 56 and he's a fraud CEO. Charlie has been helping their brother, Albert David, hide corporate money and avoid paying taxes for years, perhaps even decades. They also have been accused of insider trading and other fraudulent activities. They currently live in a mansion just outside of town. Well, let's free up that mansion for literally anybody else. Good, he's going in the death pile. And who's this? Iwa Zwaneska, 33, she's a nurse. Iwa works as a nurse in the in intensive care unit, making sure the patients don't suffer more than they have to. Iwa is also a big ag advocate of euthanasia. Sometimes they feel so bad for a patient, they give them the gift of death and an act of mercy without really consulting them. That's Nurse Ratchet kind of stuff right there. Only two can die though. What about this guy? Benoit Krakow, 55, he's an online casino operator. Wow, look at this guy. 
Benoit built a website to lure people who like to gamble but don't want to leave the house to do so. All the games are rigged, of course, and highly addictive. They have games designed to appeal to people of all ages and social backgrounds, even kids. Well, that's not our department. Kids are another place, apparently. Alright, Hannes Fjall, 36 Waste Disposal. Han. Now Han started working on waste disposal a few years ago, but they forgot to ask where to dump the waste during orientation, and at this point they're too afraid to ask. They sneakily bring everything into nearby forests where no one is looking. Oh, that's embarrassing. Alright, this lady right here, Johnny Claparaday, 28, biomedical engineer. Finally, a necklace that would make Johnny stand him out among other scientists at conferences was in their possession. The price of getting it was so big they could no longer sleep at night, but they couldn't throw the item away either. The necklace demanded to be worn. It demanded a sacrifice. Okay, that seems important for later. Let's get him to live. Uh, who else was there? So this lady here is a cut purse. So we need to put literally one more person to die, right? We only need two people to die? Yeah, only two people to die. So this guy is an online casino operator. Let's see who we, who we find more revolting. A thief? A casino operator, or who else? Nurse Ratchet. You know, it's probably gonna be a hot take, honestly, but it's, it's gotta be the online casino guy, right? Okay, the thief lives, and so does the cut purse as well. Uh, so we've only got one more, this guy, Han. Hans can live. Excellent, so that's quota, done. Man, we are blasting through this. I thought they'd actually be a lot more difficult than they are, but it seems like, seems like we're doing pretty well. Okay. Fate wants to see us. All of fate! Welcome, Grim. It is the end of the week. Your performance review draws near. How do you think you have been doing? But I want to gamble? Call me rice gum? Uh, fortunately, you'll actually be really, really pleased to hear that even though I've just killed one CEO of an online uh, casino company, there are still thousands of them uh, pumping out shameless cash grabs for you to waste all of your money on and uh, not get any return on other than some free little flashing lights which you could literally get in every single other game on uh, the Google Play Store. So uh, don't worry, don't worry, the opportunity to literally give away all of your money to a revolting piece of garbage is always going to be available uh, at any given time. In fact, if you're gonna give away all of your money to a revolting piece of garbage, why not give it to me? I've been killing people here. I am literally sitting here gauging Who's worth living and who's uh, worth killing? Like that is exactly what we're playing right here. All right, how do you think we've been doing? Uh, crushing it! Profiles come in, why send them out? Clockwork! Interesting. Hmm. Yes, your answer has been recorded for the psych eval. Now then, before the assessment, let us look over your daily conduct. We're going for like an Ares build. I, th I think that's who we're role-playing role as, Ares, the, um, the, the Greek god of war, who was uh, so violent that every day he would wake up to slay his nemesis, skin his nemesis, and use the skin from his nemesis as a kind of like fresh bedding. I see the required profiles are all here. I'm not joking, by the way. That is actually canon lore in the, in the Ares universe. Excellent. This bodes well for the evaluation. I guess it is time to get started. Lovely. Wait! I wanted to ask about today! Yes? What about today? Did I make a difference? Did we help? Oh, doesn't matter. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Things are already looking up. It doesn't matter if we made a difference or not. Do not worry about it. Fixing the world is a slow process. So, keep at it. As long as you follow the rules, it will all get better. Since when did making the world better become in the scope of the purview of death? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, people who do make the world better die early. That happens very frequently. People who make the world worse usually accrue enough money to die late. So, like, our job is not to balance the scale. Our job is literally just to collect the souls of the dead. Now, where did I put those papers? Ah, here we go. Right. Looking at these stats, the numbers say... Your conduct over the seven days has been most excellent. I am, sincerely, surprised and pleased by your display of loyalty. I have, I'm not loyal to you, Fate. So much so that the office has deemed you fit for a raise. You got a raise. We don't really do this for the money, you know. Of course, we do it for the excitement of paperwork. 
That's right! Paperwork! Speaking of, the raise also comes with a prize. The office is proud to present you with an award of excellence. Display it proudly on your workstation. Great, more things to put into a drawer. Fate just clapped four times for us. Do not let this cloud your judgment. You still have much to learn and many rules to follow. Why like ice cream? What? I swear, there must have been something off in oh, Grim Brew. It's an achievement. No, no. <laughs> there was an achievement for clicking on that. It, it said ice cream. Uh, say you like ice cream, which is awesome. I love that. As such, your seven day evaluation period has concluded. You have passed. Thank you. That is all. Until tomorrow, Grim. It feels good. Feels good. We are the highest performing murderer in this area. We just got a raise. Nice. Oh, you actually donated Red Rocks. Oh, that's so kind of you. Sending money to a revolting piece of garbage right now. <laughs> it will be spent. It will be spent. Okay, let's check out Mortimer's place. I don't remember if we saw it. Yeah, it was nothing here. But the bar's open. There might be somebody at the bar. Big thanks, Red Rocks. Uh, let's look at this pot right here. Uh, it's not talking. Bucky, when did you get this plant? Well, let's, let's ask the plant first. What are you doing here, odd plant? What do you think? Having a nice, relaxing drink? <laughs> Hang on, are you from the plant department? Who told you about the plant department? Am I not supposed to know about the plant department? No one is supposed to know about the plant department. Okay. Forget what you heard, Sonny. No such thing. Anywhere. Come on, you can tell me. Uh, ain't nothing to tell. I don't believe you. Not gonna lose any sleep over that, Sonny. Really? We deny everything. Come on, tell me. Stop bothering an old plant, why don't Seriously, you can trust me. Can we? Can we really? I can give a secret. You have to tell You're me. Not gonna leave us alone, otherwise. No. Yeah. Sonny, it's just a regular department. Not even that big, but it's very busy. Well, why didn't you just say so to begin with? We're real tired of folks asking about the plant department. Really? Why? Is why we visit the den on Sundays. It lowers the chance of bothersome busybodies with annoying questions. Seems counterintuitive. Who even gave you the idea the department is anything interesting? Doesn't the mystery act just make you more compelling to people? Eh, might be. Can't help it though. There's theater in my xylem. Okay, he's a thespian. Anything else? Seeing as we're now deep in the soil of inquiry. Yeah, what's your name? Me? I'm Herbert. Of course you are, Herb. You know. Yeah. Sort of like a herb Yeah, yeah. Hurt. A herb. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Who were you before you became a plant reaper? I'm been Herbert and the green fella holding me up. That's my pal Tim. Tim's a real hoot. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Oh, shame. <laughs> shame on you. Who's Tim? Tim's my partner. All root, stem, and leaf. Sometimes they bloom and have the most delightful aroma. Pull them out from the roots? Who? Tim. And the bees from the bee department find us very attractive. Why are bees deciding whether or not bees live or die? Anything else? There's a bee department? Of course. Makes perfect sense, don't it? Uh, d d don't ask about the bee department. Tell me more about the bee Anything department. Anything else? Is there really nothing unusual at the plant department? Okay. We see you got a keen mind, so we'll let you in on a secret. Yeah, go on. But you didn't hear this from us. Gotta promise you won't spill a bean. I promise, I won't tell anybody. If at some point you break your word, beware. Our Rizo reaches far and wide. Right into your room, if need be. I don't care. And these roots can rip <laughs> the skull off a skeleton in an instant. Snap. Yeah, yeah, just tell me the secret. We are secretly developing a way for the death mark to create fungus-based undead who will devour the world. Gaha, uh -huh, real funny. I know. 
<laughs> okay, I'll catch you later. Not in this lifetime, Sonny. But we're immortal, so this lifetime is perpetual and unending. We could talk to Gus and we can't talk to Gus again. What about this lady right here? You got any more exposition for us? Hey, pleased to see you again. Yeah, what's up? Ain't much happening here today. It's a slow Sunday. Anything I can get you? What's the deal with the plant? You mean my favorite pot chock full of plant department goodness? I guess. They usually drop in on Sundays due to an aversion of people, which is funny because they're really quite sociable. Personally, I love their quirky sense of humor. Your standards are incredibly low. What else is there to say? Okay, I'm off. Au revoir, little reaper. Bye bye. Pardonnez-moi. We're leaving. Bye bye, everybody. Okay, we got some more lore. So there is actually a plant department, and it's just full of revolting puns. Let's end the day. I think that's a good idea. Okay, what's next? Can we go see Fate? No, he's uh, he's telling this demon right here that he's he's done real bad things in his life, and the demon's about to get fired. Sucks to be him. All right, let's check out uh, Mortimer's shop. I know what you're thinking. I do provide ancient, powerful witches. That's not what I was thinking. Uh, this suit would make me look sharp and professional, while the bow tie adds a subtle flavor of levity. But for the funeral of clowns. Right, there's a lamp here. The infernal illuminator reveals that which is most deeply hidden once you've already made the choices and are passing through again. Elsa can't show much anything because that's how things work, okay? All right, so we actually need to buy this lamp eventually. Wait a minute, can we just buy it now? How much is it? It's 1,200. We are literally 100 bucks short. That sucks, but it's absolutely fine. Let's just carry on. Yes. Next day. Nice. Best newcomer, present to the Grim Reaper for your contributions to the killing of many humans. Awesome, let's put that in here and never look at it again. Oh no, these things are actually multiplying. Uh, that's going in the drawer. Hello Grim, uh, yes, hello there. Morning Grim, a whole week already, my, the time flies. Well, more tasks, straight ahead, I think we are making a difference, so let us continue with what we are doing. Three humans have to die, and spare any humans aged between 35 and 60 if possible. Alright, that's not too hard. Let's go ahead and do that. We've only got four today. So this guy's a year above, right? Part-time scholar, part-time engineer, and part-time musician who delights in building their own musical instruments out of scrap and spare parts. I actually know somebody like this. David Sharp, 43, content creator. All right, well, he's gonna die. An avid proponent of the Bowl Earth conspiracy theory. Their mission is to spread the truth around the globe. They like collectible cards and cats, hate aeronautics engineers and mornings. David smells of cigarettes and shampoo. Die. Sorry, buddy. If you spread misinformation around the world, you're going to die. Uh, probably should have spared him because he was in between the uh, the age range, but I think it's absolutely fine. So that's one. Bjorn Urter, uh, 56 years old, unemployed. Bjorn has been unemployed for nearly a decade. After many failed job applications, they lost motivation to try again. To pass time, Bjorn has started obsessively watching rom-coms, even quoting them in random conversations. Uh, that sucks. That'll go on the uh, probably going to die pile. All right, Mercury Saint uh, Johans, Saint Jones or something like that. Motivational speaker. Nature was not stingy when it came to granting charisma unto Mercury. A true silver tongue, the smooth talker could convince anyone to do almost anything. As such, they found their calling in being a motivational speaker. Recently, they've included proselytizing into the uh, into the earth. I don't know, even know what that means. Whew. The lady is feeling kind of freaky. She is a bit freaky, isn't she? That demon lady at the power right, I imagine you're talking about. Right, geneticist. Niha is secretly researching the, gen the genetical combining of plants and animals. In addition to mammals capable of photosynthesis and sunflowers with ears, they also dream of a pet hedgehog with an actual hedge instead of spines. So far, the research has been costly, but they believe it's for a greater good. Their colleagues are on high alert. Okay, let's take a look at our... Spare any humans aged between 35 and 60. So, these are the ones that Grim wants us to kill. And all of the rest of these guys must die. We've already killed one of these guys here. These two have to die, unfortunately. These two have to live, according to fate. Let's just do that for now. All right, live, live. Good, good. And now we want to die these two, don't we? That's such a shame. I don't know why she was trying to put hedges on the back of the hedgehog. If you just put some chia seeds in the hedgehog's spine, it will actually grow a hedge. All right, it should be everything. Yes, let's confirm our choices. Dunion rings. 
I do feel like we have Anubis vibes. There is an ank and a skull right on the little uh, fax thing that we kind of file all of our paperwork into. Hello! Grim. Ah, yes, there you are. Good, good. <clears throat> okay, now, listen up. What else am I going to listen to in your office? Great work today. You fulfilled your tasks adequately and all that. Oh, shucks. You, you, you're a charmer. However, an emergency has occurred which requires my utmost attention, and I must depart for a couple of days. Okay! Yes, good. While I am forced to absence, another will be in charge. Sure. Even though you passed the evaluation, I cannot leave you without any supervision. You will have more freedom, sure. But it is not limitless. Sure. Therefore, you will have to continue your daily reports as usual. I will be informed of your progress. Who will I report to? Why, you are already acquainted. It will be Lady Poddington, of course. I've already theorized that this cat is Satan. Okay, so we're going to be reporting back to that satanic cat, which is not amazing. Oh. I didn't realize that we could just hold up and down. It moves the elevator. Do we kind of want to take a look at this lamp right here? It might be a really good idea. I'm gonna buy it. The base, the marble plate of yore. The arms melted from the cannons of a galleon. A socket, a shell of a ferocious sea monster. The shade made from the skull of the beast of Ogward. Really? The coil bent from the thorns of a rose bush in Guiana. I, me drinking buddy, a master electrosmith built this illuminator. Why? He also loved to spark me drink and laugh gleefully when me whole jaw sizzled. Pranked him right back by knocking his teeth out. <laughs> Bro, assault is not a prank. Despite what my hometown claims. Assault is just straight up not a prank. Do I just hear a fart? I think I just heard a fart. Right, let's end the day. We've seen a lot. I think we've seen enough. Uh, let's check for cat ears. Hopefully we've got the cat ears roll. Friend, no, we did not. Your visits like the sun. Regular. And warms the room. Uh, we got a candy skull here. Only a noble craftsman can craft an alphanique of this caliber. Exquisite, tasty. No one can deny I'd have the sweetest possible visage if I wore this. Okay. Peculiar flex. Oh, we've already seen that. The annals of transience help keep track of any passing temporalities. It counts days in a month from 1 to 28. Those are all the days. All of them. We might want to buy that at the end of today, if we can afford it. Let's try do that. There is like a story going on in the background here. I do see it, but there are so many stories going on that we're probably going to have to pick a branch. All right, let's read this. Uh, so, right after I left, mere moments, it seems to me something happened at the plant department. Do not ask. As such, I need to, oh, right, you to fill in today, basically as a grim for them. I hope it is okay. Right for the day. Three plants have to die. Sure. All right. So... I don't know how we know about the plant department. Does this actually reveal hidden truths? Oh, okay. There's cool little icons instead of the actual words themselves. Neat. Weird. Plant economy goes up, uh, healthy and peaceful. Right. That is really neat. Oh, I love that so much. Okay. Okay. Carly Tragus, 98532. Or something like that. Age 6, survivalist. Carly is a pink browned clump of branch tangled stems, each one up to about a metre long. Carly and their brothers and sisters started growing after a wildfire cleaned up a large patch of land. No other plants could survive on the dry soil. Carly enjoys travelling and beautiful architecture. I like that. What about this maze? Allopicurus preten pretensis. It's a pretty long number as well. Age 1, photosynthesis, that's its position. I followed you on Twitch. Yeah, I did see that. I saw you followed me on Twitch. I don't use Twitch. I've gained like 16 followers over the last couple of months on Twitch. I don't even use it anymore. So this blade of grass is really interesting because it is slightly smaller than a regular grass blade, but not by much. It grows on a field of almost identical grass plants. Well, that's nice of it. What is this? Jova Barber Globifera, age 14, a jobless. Jova Barber, with a common name Rolling Hen and Chips, is a tiny succulent who likes sunbathing. It lives on the seaside between the rocks next to the seagull nest, never moving, enjoying the small things in life like not being eaten by a snail or not having a seagull scream at it for a moment. <laughs> oh my god, here in Dunedin, New Zealand, where I live, we have seagulls instead of terns. 
The rest of the country, they've got terns, which are beautiful birds. They're quite small, they look like doves, and they sound gorgeous when they scream. Seagulls, they're the worst. Ah! Ah! You literally can't go anywhere in the city without hearing ah! just above you. And then they swoop you if you're trying to eat food as well. It's awful. I, I actually relate to that plant, that succulent. Can we move this? Yes. Schefflera arborolica, 529. Companion. Schefflera, uh, also known as Lisa, is the house plant of a photography students. In many cases, it has been over or underwatered. However, it has quite a high tolerance for neglect and poor growing conditions. Its main hobbies are photosynthesis and people watching. What does it do? Uh, I don't actually think it matters who lives and dies in this instance, right? Okay. Helipericus pretensis, photosynthesis, uh, Helipericus. Also known as the meadow, foxtail is grass. I swear, if I have to make another file about a blade of grass, I will quit. Okay, all of these are the same thing, right? All of, all of these just have the same perks about them. So, we need to kill three, right? My town, Brighton, is literally the representation of seagulls. It's, the, it's awful, isn't it? It sucks. Okay, well, it sucks to be this plant right here. I know it's going to be like, the game's going to be like, oh, you killed my best friend or something like that. Uh, this one here can live because it is giving somebody in our department a good quality of life. What else have we got? We've got a blade of grass, got a tumbleweed. But I think that succulent can live, honestly. I think these two will die. And the succulent, even though it's jobless, uh, I do like the fact that it, it quite likes when there are not seagulls screaming at it. Let's go ahead and whack that right there. Excellent. So that's responsibilities done. Do you want to confirm your choices? Yes. I'm very happy with our choices. I still don't know why they've uh, given the icon of life to be the Egyptian Ang. Maybe that's what that icon represents. Uh, let's go down to see if the pub is open before we do anything else. It is not. Good to know. You're always trying to steal my fish and chips. Man, I feel your plight. Yet when you park near the beaches around where I live in Dunedin, seagulls gather around the cars because they think that you are going to um, take trash and throw it out your window instead of leaving the car and putting it in the bin right next to the car. So the seagulls like try and swarm the cars. They'll like sit all over your windshield, you won't be able to see anything. I've actually seen people have car accidents because seagulls swarm their back windshield as they're backing out of parks and uh, they don't see cars coming so big wallop on that one. Big womp womp. Alright, here's the cat. The cat sits behind the table, very serious and official-like, ignoring your presence. Uh... <coughs> the cat turns her head towards you, staring uh, with her one open eye. That's not... It's got two open eyes! A consistency game! Meow, she mutters, then places her paw upon some documents littering the table. The cat repeats a sequence of contented meows. She then curls back into a ball and closes her eyes. Uh... Hey, cat, I bought you a gift. I'll give her the rubber gerbil. Lady Portington's eyes grow wide and dark. Wow, I actually just appeased the boss's cat with this achievement right here. That's hilarious. Grow wide and dark as you place the gerbil on the table. She pats the chew toy with her paw. Squeak! The rubber toy squeaks eerily. Ah, uh, cool. Nothing ominous here. The cat eagerly stares at the toy gerbil, fully ignoring your presence. Squeak! The toy gives out a sad noise as you make your way out the door. Excellent. There's a McDonald's by the beach in Bryce. That's just a bad idea. And the seagulls gather around there at the same time at noon. Yeah. Uh, we've got a cup. We had a... There was a Burger King really close to the coast. And seagulls would just swarm it every single day. So nobody ended up going there and it ended up closing down really fast as well. No, it was a McDonald's actually. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Burger King at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check Mortimer's shop because we got that raised, didn't we? We ah, can afford things. Perhaps he requires a delightful gift for a significant friend. No, I don't. But thank you for the uh, the lore dump. It spins and whirs. This is a fidget spinner. It spins and whirs. It clicks and clacks. Very soothing and helpful in times of stress. More to you, less to others. Okay, that is fantastic. Whoops. Let's go to work. Can we go into this? No, we can't go downstairs yet. We go to work. Nice. A letter. All right, we are back to normal. The plant department got their act together. That was the zombies, by the way, that the plant department were talking about at the bar. You, however, should be intimately familiar with the drill, with the drill by now. We mitigate chaos, we bolster order, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Quote for the day, two humans die. Okay, that's 50%. Let's balance the world. Bait. Throw that in the bin. How many pigs have we got? Not a lot. 
Not a lot indeed. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this. So, Chiel van den Standen, 47, astrophysicist. Chiel focuses on researching red dwarfs and the possibility of finding habitable planets in their systems. As a long life science fiction fan, they were sad but accepting of their children dressing up as bow wielding fair folk from a fantasy novel. Oh, that's pretty funny. What is he doing? All right, so he's peaceful, he betters the world, he's good for the economy, and he's uh, also healthy. Are any of these, like, different? Because they all just seem to have the same icons over and over again. But maybe we have to make the choice first before we actually see. Hard to tell. Really hard to tell. Okay, uh, John Millibrand, 28, he's a cultist. John started following a prominent lifestyle guru on social media a few days ago. What began as an innocent interest in wall painting soon transformed into an unwavering insistence that wallpaper is the only acceptable wall covering. That's a weird opinion, but I'm not gonna... That's based. Magnus Whitaker, 39, he's a brewer. Magnus is an experienced brewer who produces artisan beer. Their specialty is microbrew, but they have also experimented with nano and pico brew. They are currently building an experimental brewery capable of producing femto brew. What is that, like fentanyl mixed with beer? Maybe he dies. Gregoire Hale, 31, he's an archaeologist, a legitimate researcher or greedy tomb raider. Consensus has not been reached when it comes to this noted archaeologist. For the past five years, they've been digging up artifacts around the Faradon region. Okay, let's see what they dig up. Live! He lives. Uh, so, one of these guys has to live, right? Probably going to have to be the science fiction fan. Honestly, he's probably the most relatable one of all of these people. Which means that, unfortunately, Magnus Whitaker and John Millibrand uh, are, are... Oh, okay. I didn't realise that we could actually doodle on them. Let's go ahead and draw a uh, ding-a-ling. Yeah, that's pretty good. Die. And die. Excellent. Sorry, buddy. Excellent. All right, um, we'll go ahead and we'll start actually marking these out. I didn't realize we could use the markers. All right, we're clocking out. We only do any real, I think, in a given week. We only really do about 15 minutes of actual work, right? I can't remember if I've told the story before, but I got banned from a Discord server for saying that Logan Paul apology script. Yeah, it's, it's probably spammy, right? A lot of people would consider that to be spam. Oh, the cat's really going to town on that doll. As you enter, the cat is whacking the chew toy aggressively with her paws. The toy cries in the most despondent voice possible. Ah! Uh, I'm here for the daily feedback thing! With a majestic grace, the cat lowers her head onto a pile of documents. The cat notes, while casually twirling around on her spot, pawing at the table. Well, take this to mean that I'm doing well! The cat carelessly stretches and shakes herself, seeming more or less pleased. A swift nod towards the door with her head makes it clear you should be leaving. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Nice, 400 buckery booze. Was there anything worth grabbing? There was that fidget spinner down below at Mortimer's office, but I don't really think that there's anything else down here, right? No, just mirror, just a cape, and... Okay. Ah, it spins and whirs, it clicks and clacks. Very soothing and helpful in times of stress. More to you, less to others. Yep. Fidget spinners really, really do bother people off. No, they said that it was disrespectful to people with depression. That's just a crock of absolute garbage. I think somebody was trolling you and then perma-banned you for a laugh. Okay, let's go to work. Read me! Okay, morning, Grim. My hands will be kept mighty busy today. What the darn have you been up to over at the office? From what I can see in the data, it looks like a problem mess. Point for the day, total of seven humans have to die. At least two humans with a religious background have to die. Spare any retired people if possible. Well, no time to waste, get thee to it. Bait. All right, seven people, we have to choose one person to live. Okay, Michael Batar, he's a postal clerk. Michael has been dedicated worker at the... Okay, Grim, yes, you, listen up. Why are you such a tool, sitting at your desk, going over all the profiles like a mindless drone? It's time to break the rules. I want you to doom all the profiles today. All of them, prove you're not completely useless. Ah. Uh... Well, it does say that seven humans have to die. Why would I do that? Why would I do this? What? Why would I do that? Absolutely not. Okay, praise the revelation, cries Graham, the often so-called right-hand person of Mercury Street Eons of the Path of Glory. Little is known of their path, only that they joined the commune at the very beginning. They are seen as the organizational brain behind the whole affair. Okay, he has to die, he's got a religious background, so let's go ahead and strike his eyes. Oh wow, that, the pen is real fiddly. 
Uh, this guy right here, he's a pilgrim. That's, again, a religious background. Nobody really knows when Tidor started their pilgrimage, but it is speculated that they have been walking along various pilgrimage paths, helping random strangers and writing wrongs for almost 10 years. Right, that's a good thing, actually. He does, he's doing good. Lorenthal is a full-time cashier, and they've embraced the grind of the Will of Steel, their beacon in darkness and spa uh, space exploration. Lorenthal supports every act taken towards space, and they even take cosmology astronomy classes in the community college, with the hope that one day contributing to the cause. Okay. Everyone seems like a good person, right? Despite their old age, Alessandro retired from working as a Miagra salesman only a few years ago due to a lack of stamina for this high-energy role. He should have been taking Miagra. They are finally able to enjoy life after decades of hard work attempting to fulfill their dream of opening an erotic art gallery. Eww. Put him in the maybe lives. Brian Callis the thing Narcus, janitor, raking leaves is hard. Blowing them around with a leaf blower is much more fun. This is why Brian takes care of the leaves exclusively with a leaf blower starting already at 6 in the morning. The toxic fumes the machine emits don't concern them one bit. Alright, he's gonna die. Right. Self fulfilling prophecy. Alright, he's going in the death pile. And we probably also want to kill this uh, guy right here who runs a cult as well. Yes, and this guy right here probably should be in the live pile. We'll go ahead and weigh all of their souls. I'm really excited to see you play the beginner's guide. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for it too. Balthazar Bowers, 53, ex-child actor. As a child, Balthazar starred in a series of somewhat popular, if critically lambasted films. Mockery and the subsequent demand to prove themselves drew to ruin their psyche. They soon spiralled into alcoholism and drug abuse until they met Mercury, who invited them to join all the downtrodden at the Path of Glory commune. All right, he's a cultist, he has to go. That, I think that's supposed to be a uh, crack at Macaulay Culkin, right? Home Alone, child star. Whoa, look at this guy, Mike Jordan. 73, retired. Mike loves bird watching in nature, although it, they and their spouse live in the middle of the city. They've written six books about birds. They're still in good shape and go to dancing classes twice a week. Oh well, sucks to be him. He should be contributing more to society, unfortunately. So goodbye, goodbye friendo. So we've got three souls over here who could potentially save the world from a gigantic issue, right? This guy right here is kind of like a life coach. Uh, this guy here is a Viagra salesman who wants to open an erotic gallery. And this lady here is an astrophysicist. I think we all know what the obvious choice is, right? We all know what the obvious choice is. All right, she's dying. He's dying. And this guy here is going to live. We're going we're gonna to give Alessandro Meles. Uh, let's actually redact his name. We're going to give him the ability to fulfill their dream of opening an erotic art gallery. Nice. Actually, let's redact that as well, just so that nobody knows why we have uh, speared him too. Good. I'm happy with this. And the postal guy, unfortunately, he's got to die, right? Because seven people have to die. It's just uh, bad luck. Die. Sorry. I don't even know who gave us that statistic right there. What is this guy's? Oh, no, they all just show up these. All of these show. Okay, so we probably actually bought that lamp well in advance. Oh, we've got news as well. Window shopping for planets. Could this planet be our future home? Uh, well, no, actually, because the astrophysicist just got killed. Historians warn artifacts looting on the rise, especially in formerly war-torn Faradun. Polito, we have to do something about the looting that's re-escalating the conflict. So not my problem, I'm just dead. Ugh. Of opening sesame is probably what it says. Okay, there was a lot of stuff that just went into the facts right there. Opening sesame, uh, what do you mean by opening sesame? Define. Wait, where is death? Sorry, fate, where is fate? As you enter, you see the cat prone and eyeing the rubber toy with utmost suspicion. All of a sudden, she turns her attention to you, a devious glimmer in her eyes. The cat continues to stare, her tail waggling in a manner that seemed pleased. Uh, okay. What the hell, cat? What even was today? Lady Pordington sits in silence, an accusatory look in her eyes. What? Whatever, cat. I'm leaving. The cat blinks, then turns her attention back to the small rubber gerbil. The toy squeaks all of a sudden. I do love that. I love that the squeaky toy is voiced. All right, I've got 400 buckery boos. Let's go all the way down into the basement, see if we can't spend it at the pirate's booty hole. Aye. <laughs> This port offers the best trade in the universe. <laughs> All right, we're in the booty hole. A coin, the thing which usually makes up the largest portion of any buried treasure. It's called ephemeral mortality. Don't know what it does. It's also 600 bucks. 
Autumn falls. This elegant countenance is meant to be worn for celebrations during the gloomiest time of the year. It really brings out the eyes, those deep, soulless, empty, dark eyes. It's an accursed gourd. It costs 400 bucks. I'm going to be a little bit stingy for now. Let's just save up our money until we know we're actually going to be spending it. Right? That makes the most sense. It's in the day. Uh, okay, we can't go up. We can't really go down either, I think. I'm gonna check out Mortimer's den just in case. Ahoy, matey. What can old Mortimer offer you today? Now, I want this eye right here. The eye of Anpu. I don't know why I want this, but I definitely want it. I'm buying, I'm buying the eye of Anpu. Dunes, no. There be ancient civilizations under the sand sometimes. Okay. Once I dug out this particular golden icon. It's made of gold? All while I was digging, the bowels of the world eater rang in my ears. But I persisted. Dug until me fingers cracked. No stopping. Till the riches were secure. Ah, tis truly a wondrous thing. Turns your own head into a jackal that does. Oh, cool. So we actually can be Anubis now. Awesome. Can you give us a gulp, gulp, gulp I need for something important? Uh, I don't know how to do those those voices. All I can do is exhale voices. Uh, like, literally, doing inhale um, voice acting damages your voice permanently, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. Read this. G'day, Grim. The world is a wondrous thing. Oh, what I have seen out there. Now, do try to balance out the turmoil of yesterday. Success can be forged with but a hell, a hell full of deaths, yes? Okay, three humans have to die and spear any humans with a lore background. An unforeseen logic guides our hand, but a logic nonetheless, fate. I think that fate didn't actually write this. I don't think fate wrote that. Uh, let's check the news real quick. Ex-child actor found dead at the Path of Glory commune after police raid, drug overdose expected, mass suicide at the Path of Glory, entire commune dead by what looks like to be an overdose at the behest of noted speaker and cult leader Mercury St. Oans. Old man opens erotic art gallery. Hey, nice! Uh, pregnancy rate suddenly increasing. Scientists baffled. Why? Crack of dawn, leaf blower dead after getting struck in the head with flat iron thrown by a neighbor. <laughs> That's unsurprising. Leaf blowers should be banned to increase urban air quality, lower stress levels. Black hole sent? Sent to end all life? I don't know. That sounds a bit mongering to me. That was perfect. Matthias Leib, 18, a student. It has been said that Matthias talks too much, however, they themselves think that they may not be talking enough at all. Space radiation is their passion and they are endlessly fascinated by black holes. Okay, he might be a live. This guy, Darius De Avanti, is a security guard. Darius really messed up at their grocery store security job, which is why they now guard a hill of dirt at a construction site. That night, they keep hearing odd sounds and seeing bizarre visions, but no one believes them. To avoid getting fired, they've decided to keep quiet about the strange things in the night. That's a... That's a, that's a rip on the movie Mirrors. That's clever. John Carey, 39 lawyer. Jonathan enjoys doing pro bono work at various penal facilities all over the county in order to reduce sentences of minor offenders. In their free time, they like to go train spotting with friends and family. Uh, train spotting is about heroin, so he's dead. I'm sorry, buddy. He went straight to the die pile. Amy Morin Podge, 35, she's a poacher. Amy is a gifted hunter who has recently found a way to make a decent living with the skill. They hunt the elusive mountain cats for their fangs, which are thought to cure a multitude of health problems. Uh, die. Absolutely not. No. Uh, sorry, lady. Old Dar McGrath, and we've also got Amira Cormarker. So, Amira is a superintendent here. Amira has a secret child w with an inmate. What? Amira has a secret child with an inmate and is the main supplier of narcotics to her prison. On the side, they're developing a nationwide cost-cutting regimen that would automate the whole prison system, removing all personnel and leaving only robots. Okay. Uh, Alter McGrath is an alchemist. After decades of unsuccessful attempts at turning mercury into gold, Altar decided to utilize their alchemy talents in health gear. They carefully mixed together various chlorine and sulfur-containing compounds and selling it as a cure for everything. That would make chlorine gas. Nope. Sorry, he has to die. Uh, I, that was an easy choice to make, actually, because this lady here, if we read through her bio really, really quickly, how is, how is that about heroin? Train spotting. Oh, right, you might be too young. Um, train spotting is a movie franchise about uh, a bunch of people who kind of dick each other over so that they can um, get like a tiny little bit of money. It's all about heroin as well. It's a depressing watch, but it is a really, really good movie. Much like 
have people say, oh, I really, really like the boy in the striped pajamas. You know, like, the movie itself is uh, not worth watching and it's not interesting and there's no takeaway message and ultimately it's a waste of time, but it's, it's, it's good. It's a good, it's a good movie. It sets out what it, what it achieved to do, which was nothing. Amira has a secret child with an inmate, right? Okay, so this is creepy. And is the main supplier of narcotics to her prison. Why did I spear her? We're gonna spear her because if she is the main supplier of narcotics into the prison, she could actually be the medical pharmacist, right? And we don't necessarily know that the inmate got her pregnant while he was in prison. I think it's likely, but we don't know this for certain. They look like alien frogs. What, the, uh, the people from Trainspotting? Okay, these guys are gonna live. Uh, live. The black hole guy is gonna live, and Darius the Avanti is gonna live as well. So that's balance right there. That's exactly what we were asked to do. You wanna confirm your choices? Abs goddamn lootly. Stick to our guns, baby. Alright, cat. What the hell? Oh right, we must have bought something for the for the for the room. That's nice. Alright, here's the cat again. The cat seems to be in slumber, occasionally emanating a soft snore like purr. Seemingly in sleep, she swings her languid paw at the rubber toy. The toy laments in their misery. Uh. Kitty cat! Time for the review! After a pause, the cat sluggishly sniffs the usual pile of documents waiting on the table. The cat continues inspecting the documents for a few seconds and then turns away, seeming pleased. Uh. Hey, can I ask you some questions instead? The cat stares at you, slowly blinking. What do you think of fate? The cat notes m melodiously. She blinks at you, perplexed. Wait, why am I trying to talk to a cat? The cat emits a sequence of low-pitched meows, possibly indicating her value as a discussion partner. <laughs> well, that was informative. We'll be going now. The cat curls back into a ball and continues her pre previously disturbed slumber. You stick to your gun, but you use PVA glue. I'm 14 and this is deep. I don't use PVA glue, no. Uh, I am based and I use Gorilla Glue for just about everything. Or Shoe Glue. Shoe Glue is really, really strong. It has a tensile strength that usually is stronger than the things you're trying to glue together. All right, so what is this box in here? Oh, I need to buy the mirror to actually get into the clothes changing thing, right? So we need to buy a mirror. We could probably afford one at this point. All right, good. Yeah, here we go, mirror. Pursue the finest booty you've ever seen. I mean, I, I did, and now I'm dating in set. A pair of sleek, stylish modern glasses that grant a pleasant face to wear and make me look wicked smart. Way smarter than the boss, you know. So we probably actually just want to buy this mirror, right? It's only 200 bucks, I'm gonna get it. Uh, tis wondrous marvel. Tell me about it. Once upon me and me crew sailed the southern seas and came across an accursed lighthouse. Why was it accursed? Plundered the lot of it, even the mirrors. What about the lights? Built the frame from beautiful driftwood washed ashore. From the ship we rammed into. <laughs> Courage and all gold, too. Course. I, a proper beauty. I was wondering uh, what the relevancy of them ramming a ship would be to the lighthouse. If the lighthouse was off, then they wouldn't have seen the shipwreck. That's what they rammed into. Is the glue immortal? Yes, glue is immortal, especially shoe glue. Is a Granny Smith immortal? No, uh, fruit dies. What about a bruised one? Uh, all fruit dies. All fruit dies, so not immortal. I want to buy this calendar right here. I don't know what it does, but I'm pretty sure Why it's going to benefit us. We scoured now every inch for this calendar. Alas, mayhaps we raided too many merchantmen for it. Because turns out, it weren't even on a ship. Where was it? Still worth it for the annals work on any year. Filled to the brim with arcane squiggles and short omens between the numbers. And in the footnotes... Also includes the major holidays of a hundred different civilizations and all the name days. <laughs> I finally procured it from an old man on the steps of Acropolis. Okay, uh, fantastic. What about berries like a pineapple? If it comes from a plant, it dies. <laughs> Pretty simple, honestly. All right, let's go up here. I think we have to... I wonder if we've actually got the mirror set up. We do now. Knock. Who's there? That's exactly the question, ain't it? Uh, that's not funny. I must be losing my mind. Lose, I'm afraid. 
You might be gaining something instead. All right. What could I be gaining? What are you? We are the exalted Chimera, envied by all the blind, arrogant fools. We are Angst Ex Milio. We are nothing. A despicable failure. We are Elan Vital, the guide who won't lead astray. If only you learn to listen. I've got a boss lady. We are death. How does it feel? Ah, uh, feels fine. Not a cloud in the sky. Have you forgotten what happened? I imagine I died. I'm seeing you, Reaver. It's a grim world out there. Okay, now we're getting harassed in our mirror by some weird, creepy lady. Heads! Heads! We've got heads! Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I like this top hat. A oh, sombrero? Oh, look at all those hats. Uh, we kind of want to go as Anubis, right? Here we go. Yeah, nice. And poo. Okay, I think this bougie gold top hat. What do we think about this? What about marine huana that comes from a plant? I think if it comes from a plant, it probably dies. Or it never lived in the first place. Like, chemicals don't live. All right, well, we're a little dog with a top hat. I love this game so much now. Uh, the, the game of the year, easy game of the year. Okay, what is this? Oh, this must be the progress of the game that we have been going through so far, right? Okay, so hello, Grim. Lucky day, or is it? Uh, the unjustly denigrated unlucky number 13. I fail to see the relevance of this kind of numerology, but it is a day, like all other days. Quite for the day, a total of three humans have to die. Humans in the field of religion have to die. Spare any humans with an artistic background. Why? Why would I do any of those things? Let's check the news on our phone real quickly. All right. Did the U prison regimen turn maximum security prisons into actual hellscapes? Who knows? That's kind of what the, that's the whole point of them. But neither do sunglasses. What, the plants don't do sunglasses? I'd be genuinely surprised if a plant can no longer wear sunglasses. Science, actually if a plant wore sunglasses, they'd starve to death. That's the entire purpose of a plant. Science today, vast advances being made in the research of reusable fuel cells. Researchers credit young talent involved in special project. I don't know if that was us. Alchemists found suffocated in their own lab. Oh, well, that sucks too. Enormous storm engulfs coast. Global warming, believed to be the root cause. Ah, uh, global warming's not a thing. Beloved community figure struck dead by lightning when taking photos in a thunderstorm. Yep, that makes sense. Poacher mauled to death by a pack of mountain cats in a seeming act of revenge. That feels good. Team of ragtag oil drillers sent to outer space to counter imminent asteroid impact threat. But we've already done that. Okay. Are we seeing the start of an apocalypse or is it just climate change? It's an apocalypse. It's not climate change. Uh, climate change is, is... Climate change is not happening. It is a farce. On this flat earth, there is no such thing as climate change. On this flat, unquestionably flat earth that we're experiencing, right? That, it, it, it's just a religious apocalypse. Logically, that is the only thing it could possibly be. Fracking is also linked to earthquakes. New research confirmed. Yep, that's definitely true. All right. So these still aren't changing, which is fine. What does this even do? Counting the days. Is it literally just a calendar that counts down the, the days? Uh, I'll leave that there. We'll close that. No, we'll leave that open, actually. All right, so... Uh, whoop. Turn off that lamp. Alora is a professional singer who joined the church choir at the local town. They offered their singing skills to the church, partly to be more devout and partly to have better access to the church wine cellar. Uh, humans in the field of religion have to die. All right, so she is a boozer. Oh, she is 21, actually. So if this is an... If she's American, which would have been really helpful to know, she would have just turned 21. Unfortunately, apparently, every single person on the planet is equal in the eyes of fate, so... We don't get that kind of context. Here in New Zealand, if you're accompanied by a guardian, you can drink as early as 14. But over in the US, it's like a hard line on 21, right? With consequence of jail. Hey, I'm back and it's raining like hell in Atlanta. Oh, that, that sucks, Juju. Oh, that's awesome. I actually really like heavy rain. Yeah, I find heavy rain really, really relaxing. I thought that it doesn't rain in hell. No, it rains in hell. It's just acid rain. It's just pollution rain. So, without the context, of knowing whether or not this lady is um, just like... When did she start drinking? When did she, when was she able to start drinking? Because she wants access to the church wine cellar. And she's singing to do so. Let's assume that she actually lives in my country of New Zealand. She's been drinking since she's 14. And we're just going to kind of like... 
will reject her. She's gonna die as well. She's had enough time. If seven years is not enough to get the bin shrinking out of your system, then chances are I'm doing her a mercy anyway. All right, Masashi Gay, Oni Lanzo, 66, engineer slash musician. Still a part-time scholar, part-time engineer, and part-time musician who delights in building their own musical instruments out of scrap and spare parts. Haven't I seen this before? Yeah, we have actually, we have seen this before. This guy must take a lot of risks. Uh, this one here, so we need to kill three of them, right? How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need to kill three of seven. Let's look for the people with the religion first. Nera is a loyal member of a group who are devoted to a forest spirit, believing both the spirit and the tree are from the future. As the mighty stout oak seems to be a lot older than the rest of the forest. Naira enjoys nature but isn't that keen on the ritual branch, whipping which seems to be important to their leader. Alright, so she gets ritualistically whipped, that sucks. I'm gonna put these in kind of like a, I don't know. Uh, she's dying. What about this lady? Jody De Silva, salesperson. And she looks like a salesperson too. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize that we get dialogue at the bottom of the screen just for hovering over them. That's weird. Until recently, Jody embraced their life as a librarian. One day they visited an exhibition at, that recently opened at an erotic art museum. There they experienced an awakening of sorts, ditching their previous profession to become a thong salesperson instead. Right, what was she doing before? A librarian. Ah, good for her. Reclaim yourself. Reclaim your sexuality. Also, we did that. We opened that, that sex place. I had to run to the car. It was soaked. Yeah, no, it gets like that here in Dunedin as well. In fact, it was like that a couple of days ago where it was flooding. And now the sun has come out to burn everybody who is brave enough to leave the house. Because we've got a hole above the ozone layer where I live. All right. Verity Hawthorne, 55, industrial chemist. Verity has been working at the pharmaceutical industry for decades, trying to find a decelerator for aging. While lately it seems that the discovery might actually come from biogenetics, Verity is certain that they can concoct some sort of chemical compound that gets the job done. You trying to play God? Absolutely not on my watch, lady. She's literally trying to extend life for decades. No, just find a decelerator for aging. So she is going in the hole, unfortunately. And she uh, also studies biogenetics, which is not relevant to choosing whether or not somebody deserves to live or die according to this game. What, a, what an absolute turd on the face of philosophy. All right, Bruno Billis is a drill master. Bruno is an infamously gruff drilling expert who has been working on a deep sea oil rig for countless years. They have a tense relationship with their offspring, yet lately have been attempting to reconnect and make things work. That's kind of nice. I feel like if we send Bruno down to Davy Jones' locker, he's going to kill everyone else on the drilling platform as well. So that's something to consider. Rajesh Nakavi is an oil fracker as well. Rajesh is in the fracking industry for the money and no cries from environmentalists will make them rethink. They're determined to rise on the career ladder and become the boss of the fracking firm someday. I live in New Zealand. Uh, this guy's going to die. Fracking is absolutely revolting. It forces whales to beach. And that essentially almost every single time leads to their death. So we're saving all of these people here. Bruno, you're going to live. Best of luck with your child. Niara, right here. Uh, best of luck getting whipped. <laughs> uh, Jody here, best of luck selling your thongs from the uh, sex museum that we created. And Masachi Oni Lanzo. Oh, never mind. He's just ma now. Good luck. Best of luck with uh, living your life. I don't really have anything else to say. We've met, we've met our responsibilities. I'm washing my hand of the day. Yes, let's confirm our choices now. All right, done. We may have made the wrong decision, but we are a noob. This. The hell is this? This is actually death with here. Hey, buddy. What's cracking? Yes? I'm spawn number 24. What's your name? The name is Frank Whittle. Hang on, don't we have to be numbered spawns? Well, I used to be spawn number 142, but, uh, but sometimes you just wish you had a more memorable name. Yeah, true. But I wanted to stand out more, <laughs> you know. And did you? Not really. No. Oh. <sighs> Explain your intense emanating sadness. Do you know about the butterfly effect? Yes. Well, what if... Well, what if I'm that butterfly? <laughs> that positively fluttering around and... And then millions of souls perish in anguish. A weird way of phrasing things, but sure. I don't want that on my conscience. I can't handle it. Oh, well. And that's, that's the least of my problems. 
Last week, someone put my stapler in a large jar of strawberry jelly. <laughs> Wait, so the stapler thing is more awful than millions in anguish? Yeah, you're not getting it. Yeah, I get it. You're feeling guilty about doing your job. And also, something that inconveniences you directly is probably going to influence you a lot more than something that you're never going to see in your life. I was devastated. Yeah, I know. I just explained it for you. And that's still not all of it. Last month, I had to work in the dog department. Oh, God, I hope we never have to go there. But I love dogs. It's sad, but it has to be done. No, not the dogs! I know, right? And the people in the dog department... The absolute bad apples. I was scared for the afterlife. I was. But you know, before that, someone filled my room with balloons. Hang on, is someone just pecking on you? Yes, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I have an inkling it's the one they call Lance Thrasher. <laughs> Don't worry, the name's not as cool as Frank Whittle. <laughs> oh, I just lied as well. I Might have to I leave and go to bed. That. That's absolutely fine, Red Rocks. The rest of the stream will be up anyway. But other people, well, they just keep telling me how great Lance Thrasher is. I want to meet this guy now. How fun they are to hang out with. How awesome they are. How amazing. How they tell the best jokes and get into the craziest shenanigans. Uh, yeah, that's Lance Thrasher for you. Do you know Lance Thrasher? Nope. No, no, it can't be. You're in a different office. Frankly, I don't understand what's so special about Lance Thrasher. But no, the name alone is pretty Gucci. So, I thought I had to let them know. Why? I walked straight over to Lance and I told them that I don't find them riveting and I don't particularly care about their lame jokes. Uh, Lance must have been devastated. But then Lance just said, keep it real, and then went on to do a handstand on their desk. I like this Lance. Everyone in the office started chanting their name. Thrasher! Thrasher! Lance, 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 Lance. What a legend. After this, <laughs> they started making my life miserable. Uh, uh, that's intense. I totally feel better about my own problems so, now. Oh, problem solver. What do you think? What should I do? Sorry, but you yourself seem to be the source of every single one of the of your problems. <laughs> Oh, suddenly you're an expert on me and my life. Well, I'm a, a, a bit of an expert on victimology. I won't be having this. Have a nice day. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, that, that was nice of him. Ah, oh, well, sucks to be that guy. What about the sexy elf? Is this Lance? <laughs> Accentuate the morphological field. Oh, oh. Some reclassification of the framing stratum. Ah, I should have known. Scaffolding of the antediluvian complex. Oh, maybe. Ah. Meta resonance trigger. It's you! I've seen you wobble around in the cellar somehow through the floor. An amazing feat, young spawnling. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That is I down in the depths. <laughs> I already hate him. This guy. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not too fond of him either. I am the prime curator of the abysmal archive. The archive of all existence. Well, you must be smart. All the bits I've managed to catalog thus far. Did you know there is a lot of existence? Yeah, I figured as much. More than you are able to conceive. Ah, yet I see promise in you, Spawnling. So... Let me tell you, uh, secret. As long as it's not any, uh, as long as it's safe for work. You see, the archive sprouts a mind eons ago, incomprehensible to most. Those were the days. We were so young then, Faith and I. Two strapping lads. Sorry, what is your name? There was little in the archive initially. But it didn't take long for it to start growing, expanding. The archive is alive? The archive whispers and murmurs, shifts and sings. It's alive in a sense. Conscious in a sense. We couldn't foresee this happening, the awakening of the archive. It's development into a unique organism. What does it want? Nothing much, as far as we can tell. 
It just exists, expands, endures. The three E's. Is it immortal? Unfortunately not. If it lives, it's it's no longer immortal. How does one navigate the archive? What happens if the archive get destroyed? I'm skeptical of this being at all possible. There you go, it's immortal. The archive has grown beyond imaginable boundaries. What could damage the animated embodiment of existence? It has to be something greater than the archive itself. Which even I must deem absurd. Awesome! I want to visit it! Alas, visitations are limited to professional archivists only. Like me! Ah, oh, it calls to me. So I must return. I hope you enjoyed our talk. This guy's a bit of a penis, isn't he? Like an actual penis. Uh, hey lady, do you have any lore to dump about these two? Why, hello again. The den is always glad to see a returning customer. Good! Two weeks down and you're still kicking. Well done. Thank you! Say, uh, so I've been thinking and, uh, I was hoping you'd explain it to me. The process. I mean, it's pretty easy. How do you make the choices? How do you really decide who gets to live and who doesn't? Well, I do have a lamp that reveals relevant details, but it doesn't actually work yet. Uh, I don't really care. I'm, well, gut feeling, whoever looks suspicious. Huh. Well, that doesn't seem reasonable. Don't you have specific rules and quotas you gotta fill? Sure, but those are more like suggestions. I'm pretty sure they're distinct guidelines you're supposed to follow. Well, I got a promotion and you didn't, lady, so... assertion is fine up to a point. Less so when many people depend on you. I don't know these people! Do you think about the people after you've made the decision? Or do you forget all about them after it's done? I remember, but what what's done is done. Doesn't all of it make you anxious? No! Sure makes me, and I ain't even the one choosing. I don't think I can handle the pressure. Gazing upon the decision tree. Branches out across infinity, across space and time. What the hell are you talking about, lady? Anyway, this has been enlightening. Thanks for the answers. Anything I can get you? Uh, yeah. What's the deal with the cat? This cat? She's an adorable furball, ain't she? Always poking around in search of mischief. That's not really what I gathered from it. She sneaks down here too, so I feed her a few morsels. I don't trust that cat. How could you not? Those big eyes. Is that fluffy fur? She's a real softy. It's nice she keeps fate company. Fate's archaic. All those aeons might not be good for the, you know, mentality. Oh wait, you think he's getting Alzheimer's what or else something? You got in mind? Uh, yeah, someone contacted me using a profile. What did this mysterious entity want? They wanted me to mark everyone for death. And you following? Oh, what? okay. Okay, she's she's got the red here. And the note that told us to do it, it was red. So I think that's her doing it. I'm more of a rebel. I don't follow orders. You follow fate's orders like a well-behaved drone, right? Yeah, only to get paid and continue the game. Uh, elsewise, truth be told, I'm of little help. I don't know what goes around in the office. I just own the den. Ah, oh, bollocks. What else you got in mind? Tell me about the archivist. The prime curator of the archive, you mean? They work down in the cellar, below Mortimer. Really? I haven't met anyone so enamored with structure and organizations before, but I guess it comes with the territory. Right. You two ought to get along fine. Heck, just bond over the equilibrium and standardizations and the like. I don't think I, I'm interested in what he you likes. eventually apply for an archive job instead. No, I, I really like being a reaper. This is probably a vocation. Good on you. It's very dangerous in the abysmal archives anyway. Do people die in there? What else you got in mind? Uh, I'll be going. Au revoir, bye bye. Reaper. Bye bye. Bye, lady. Okay, well, she was unhelpful. Uh, let's have a crack at Mortimer. All right, he's got some glasses here. We're not really interested in them. We've probably actually seen enough, right? We've seen enough of the day. We can go home. We can go to bed. The cat lounges on the table, brushing her ear with her paw. Without even glancing at the documents, she purrs softly, content at your accuracy and competence. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, how long do I have to report to you? The cat tiptoes around in her spot, ignoring your question. Damn. She notes, then curls into a ball, indicating it's time for you to leave. This cat runs a company like she's a New Zealand middle management. Like, we've got terrible middle managers here in New Zealand. Okay, I'm gonna end the day. 
Righty ho, another day, another dingling to kill. I'm gonna check out Mortimer's quarters. <laughs> yes! Okay, we're in the booty hole and we're gonna buy the cat ears. Ye you know why I was the scourge of the seas? No. Cause ain't nothing out there that frightens me. Once we looted an ancient tomb for gods and kings long forgotten. And you know what, matey? No, I don't. Found there the most particular set of ears. Wearing them gives ye supernatural hearing. Really? Happened to overhear a mutineer plot that very night. So I threw them all right overboard. Plot what happened? With the fishes now they are. Right. <laughs> are they also undead? Hope you don't come across them again, unfortunately. Uh, we've got no money. We have wasted all of our money on cat ears. What the hell is this? There's a guy standing outside here. All right, I think the pigs are breeding again. Okay. How do you live with yourself? That is the same voice as the lady okay. in the bar. Technically, you are not alive anymore. But maladies are ravaging the populace. Microbial forces having their way. But what's it to me? The poor sacks of bone and meat can't but be plagued by their tiny enemies. Why can't they just stop getting sick? Well, they can wash their hands after they poo, but that... I mean, that's that's just a band-aid for every time they poo. Uh, that would definitely extend out the, um, the, the life expectancy of people. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, life's not fair, bonehead. I'm not a skeleton. You're probably powerless. Ain't anything you can do about it. Disease will spread until it engulfs all. Consider it a warning. Will do, lady. I feel like that might be our conscience talking to us. So we need these sexy cat ears, don't we? Oh, I love the sideways paperboy hat. Sombrero, maybe. Oh, ears. I like the ears. I like that we are looking sideways too. Uh, there's no ears. Maybe we just keep the. Uh... Ooh, bougie, goodest doggo, jackal, stealth, gray. Oh, we are now a cat girl. Uh, sure. Why not? We'll go. We'll go, cat girl. <laughs> I'm actually a cat girl now. I can't believe it. Imagine. Imagine you're at the end of your life and you finally see the Grim Reaper. He, he comes up, or she comes up to you, and suddenly they go, nuzzles you, colon three. All right, so let's take a look at the news first. An animistic cult turns into an environmental group that I don't care. Chemist uses experimental anti-aging drug on themselves, grows younger until final, finally ceases to exist. That's pretty funny. Polito government to seek the ban of dangerous de-aging research. Good. Asteroid threat, a miscalculation. Astronaut drillers brought safely back to Earth. Awesome. Check this crazed old fart storm. What? Check this crazed old fart storm. A wedding and punch the groom in the face. No, I will not check that out. Economy, sir. Damages from fracking deemed to be too excessive and expensive. Government vows to shift towards developing better renewable energy sources. Excellent. Another family in poverty after joining a multi-level marketing scheme. Awesome. Check out these awesome personal jetpacks. That's got to be the uh, the multi-level marketing scheme. Has to be that lady that we uh, who sold the thongs, right? All right. So we're almost halfway through. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at these people here. Actually, no. Let's take a look at this first. Six humans have to die. Anyone related to the transportation industry has to die. Choose humans on the left side of the profile bundle to die. What? what this last one's weird. So what's, are you there, Mustache Man? Hello there, Keo City. Looking forward to the review. Fate. This is a strange series of requirements. I'm just going to keep that in the corner there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three have to live, essentially. It's probably going to be easier to pick who lives. All right, Louis Zemenis is a restaurant owner. He got the munchies for shark fin, but can't find any. Not if Louis Zemenis is near. They're a big fan of shark fin and other questionable foods like turtle jelly, which Louis has served in their restaurant for a decade. They're also involved in distributing these food items to grocery stores. That is death. You harm animal animals, you die. Easy, very easy. Okay, Cage Robson, 25 food courier. Cage just started as a food courier for some extra money. Their life changed at a supermarket. After tapping a customer on the shoulder, they were struck with an intense vision. Since then, they've tried to convince everyone that an omnipotent being walks among humans, loitering in stores, asking people to sign a petition about it. Okay, this guy's potentially death-worthy, because he's on the left side. Me Watanabe, 58, City Planning Commissioner. 
Me was recently appointed into the urban planning department, something they'd be aiming for a while. Turns out they're colluding with a number of their real estate friends in order to profit off of city redevelopment, receiving kickbacks on many construction and housing deals. I don't know why, but uh, she gives me the ick. We're, we're killing her. That was an easy choice as well. And this one over here, Dashali Smythe, supply chain coordinator. Okay, an efficient supply chain is the core of logistics and Dashali. Being detail oriented is proficient at optimizing exactly these kinds of pipelines. They're also excessively proud of this, which unfortunately has blinded them to their developing addiction to am amphetamine based focus aids. Oh well, sucks to be this guy. Amphetamines are gonna get him in the end. So we still need to pick three people to live. Uh, what was the other one? Anyone related to the transportation industry has to die. Don't know about that necessarily. Anson Sin. 22, Sinner. Anson loves to sin and is committed to performing all the four deadly sins daily. They live in a cave outside the city, avoiding law enforcement. All right, well, that's based. What about these guys? Leyland Poyer... Poilikov, 40, grave digger. A yellow sun rises. Shots have been fired tonight, is what Leyland says every morning. Looking into the distance, prepared for all the crime victims that inevitably get brought in that day. Occasionally, they find bones from the dirt and use them to act out key scenes from Whamlet. Uh, it's kind of weird, but he is doing a, a service to society, so I'm going to put him in the live pile right there. What about this guy? Michael McCowington, 23, student. Michael runs an influencer account wherein it looks as if their cat is doing book reviews. <laughs> Lately, they have been thinking about getting another cat, perhaps the one that reviews articles. Michael is quite happy with not having a significant other at the moment. All right, good for him. That's pretty base as well. Ewald Buddy, 32, neurosurgeon. Ewald, a child prodigy, has been performing brain surgery since the age of 18. Shouldn't they be qualified first? They're well established as a medical professional in academia and in practice. E Ewald is addicted to adrenaline and is well known for taking great personal risks. Okay, so probably one day he's gonna like, really screw up a brain. Europa Steel. Europa is a top gun at many multi-level marketing companies that sell everything from super juices and vitamins to toilet scrubs. Despite spotting their recruitment pitch with it's not a pyramid scheme, but they keep bringing in dozens of naive people every week. Okay, well that's probably an easy choice. Let's get rid of the multi-level marketings. Uh, I think this guy, the neurosurgeon, probably has to live, right? He's probably going to be quite important later. Okay, so that's two lives. And we need six to die, so we need one more of these people to live. Uh, this sinner, probably realistically we could just... <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm just going to... Okay. The sinner is gonna live. I want to see what happens. I am literally the outsider from Dishonored, uh, which means unfortunately these two um, relatively nondescript people are going to die. Ah oh, well, there's the rules. I don't make them. Good. I don't know if I got everybody within the transportation industry, but we did make our decision regardless. Okay, let's go talk to the cat. Ah, oh, fate's back. Excellent. Hello there, fate. Have you taken I care of the? Turned. Yes. Did you miss me? A little bit. Um, thank the gods, I was getting really tired of that cat. Oh, who is adorable? Lady Poddington? Who is? You are. Of course you are. Simp. <coughs> Purs cheerfully in response to Fate's petting. You are a delightful scamp. Yes, you are. So, okay. Yes. Today is your two-week performance evaluation. Excellent! Evaluate me! But before that... We must quickly check your daily conduct. It's been going good. Where did I place those papers? Just look beneath the squeaky toy. That's where all of the papers ah, are. Here we go. Right. Seems to be correct or whatever. <laughs> Let us proceed to the more important evaluation. Eloquently put, Fate. Hmm. Curious. Oh, Fate's pet revealed Fate's plot through loyalty. Uh, oh, I love this job so much. I can tell. Your actions speak for themselves. Overall, I am extremely pleased with your progress. You are an extremely loyal Reaper. Yeah, we are. We like murder. In fact, I have never met one so loyal, so dedicated. More! Uh, I remember when I was inspired. Tell me about it. Mm, perhaps it is time. Tell me about it. I have to tell you something you cannot speak of to anyone. If you do, all will be denied, and you will face grim repercussions. 
<laughs> yes, I'm unlocking the secrets of the plot, right? I don't think we just directly break the fourth wall and tell him that we're, we're just like going through fate over and over again to, to break the game. I'm listening. I have grown tired of it all. This tedious existence, these humans, the endless tirade of death. So that's why he's been getting us to kind of like tilt I suppose death in the in the favor of the people who would not help the world, right? Like he's doing the responsible thing, but ultimately he just wants to see the downfall of man. It is all meaningless, you see. An endless loop of monotony that I cannot escape. That we cannot escape. Do you know how long I have been doing this? No. I barely remember myself. Grim repercussions did you get it? Yes, I got it. I am exhausted and sick of it all. I wish to stop, but no one can leave until the job is done. But if the great dying claimed them all... Yes, if the rapture happened. Then I could be free and claim the rest I deserve. So I have been helping it along. The great dying. Yeah, we figured this one out already. There will be no equilibrium. All the humans will die. I will no longer be necessary and can fade away. And you, my Reaper, can help me achieve this goal. Fascinating! I have noticed your distaste for the humans. You have wished to end more of them. Well, your wishes align with mine. Just follow my rules. Nice! That's what I always wanted! Sometimes, dreams do come true. Yes, I do! Let's kill them all! Thank you for listening to an old and tired being. Here, a gift. You may have already seen it in the Emporium. Is it a fidget spinner? It is the Threnody to Desolation. It may bring you insight and inspiration. The what? The what? The what the hell is the threnody of, of dis, 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 disposition? All right, we could probably get, no, we can't afford the fidget spinner. That sucks. All right, uh, we'll go to the pub. We'll go to the pub, we'll have a wee chat with everybody. We can't talk with anybody. Oh well. So this lady here, I'm pretty sure, is the one who's like, um, she wants the world to be better, right? Maybe she's kind of the voice in our conscience. I don't know, we'll have to actually figure that out after we beat the game. Okay, let's end the game. Let's end the day right here. And I am going to go ahead and do a save. Or I could just go straight back to the main menu. Because I'm out of time for this game. I'm going to be moving on to another game called Deathloop, which absolutely slaps. I really can't wait to get back into it. I already sank like 80 hours into it some time ago. I'm going to leave before I fall asleep on my device. That's fine. You do you, uh, Red Rocks. Bye-bye. And everybody watching this, thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Death and Taxes that I have made. And right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down in the description of this video, you are going to find a link to my Discord, where you can talk with me and my community personally. And until I make the next episode, or you catch the next live stream, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!